All right, we are getting started. I, as I have said, I think over the last week or two, since I kind of decided to do it, I'm going to be starting another grand campaign. The last one I did was obviously the multiplayer one, which ended not great this summer, which was really disappointing because it was a lot of fun. And uh, I really I really did have a lot of fun with that. So I've done a couple of grand campaigns before in single player. When it, Around a year ago, like not this last summer, but the summer before that, I did a grand campaign as Poland. And then around a year ago, after I finished that one, I think it was around last winter or a little before that, I started a second grand campaign as Norway, which I got all the way to EU4. Uh, and then due to not understanding that natives are now very powerful since I last played it, I got absolutely destroyed by a Federation rage quit, which was not my finest moment. But regardless, I really like grand campaigns. Um, I'm going to be doing this one in a roleplay format, which is a lot of fun. But even even just casually, they're very fun. I mean, Paradox games, for me, have always been about, like, the mechanics, but really the story, right? I mean, you don't need to be full in role-playing to just kind of follow the story of your character, your country, whatever you want to, right? I mean, I think most of us always do that kind of in the back of our mind. I've been doing grand campaigns for a long time. Uh, I've been doing them for years. And they are fantastic. Because, like, the investment and, like, the, the story and just, like, Generally, the, the, the scale of things just becomes so dramatic that, I don't know, it, it's one of those cases where I always find it's, when I get really get into a grand campaign, I can, like, it's, it's hard not to just play it all the time. Anyway, point being, we are going to do a grand campaign starting as Judic Andrea of Logodoro. I'm saying that wrong. House Torres. So I put out a poll on my YouTube channel to decide where the starting area was. Uh, the areas I put on there were Abyssinia, Persia, Italy, and France. Uh, Italy won by a lot. It There wasn't even much of a competition. It won by a lot. Uh, the second closest, I think, was Persia, but I could be wrong. So, within that, I didn't did a poll for where to start in Italy. I think I threw in Duchess Matilda. I did uh, Richard of Apula. I did uh, Napoli. Yeah, well, uh... Think of it a reset, Condor. How's it oh, going? Nice. I'm finally doing single player, Condor. You're welcome. Anyway. Uh, I, I did, uh, I think, the Sheikh Yusuf of Balaam, and I did Sardinia, and I think there was one other. I forget what it was. Regardless, uh, it was very close. It was very close at the end. It was between uh, Rob, Duke Robert of Apula, who, oh my gosh, such an interesting person, or one of the Judaics of Sardinia, who are kings. We'll get that in a minute. I'm going to give you guys some background and overview. What's up, mage? How's it going? Hope you're doing well. When do you, when do you have that date, by the way? Cause I, I want to hear how that goes if you're okay with that because i'm curious anyway it ended up being a, a a one vote win uh i actually can probably show it in a minute but uh yeah it was between apula and sardinia and sardinia won by one vote it was very close so we will be uh, playing out this whole game as sardinia sardinia is really interesting it's uh it's an island nation obviously it's got a lot of natural resources it's really strategic in the mediterranean both militarily and economically the trade lanes obviously and up until recently, it was actually Byzantine, uh, aka Roman, right? So it's in a really interesting place. We'll go over the background in a minute. Tomorrow, but she hasn't replied to a text I sent yesterday, so she's either dead or I'm ghosted. Probably second. Fuck. Well, hopefully she's just busy, mage. I, I do hope that goes well for you. We'll go over the character in a minute, but first off, I want to show off a little bit of backstory uh, on Sardinia and the, the family that we're playing. Let me go ahead and switch to the internet browser. So this is really interesting. Um, the way that the current state of Sardinia is, they're, they're known as uh, uh, judgedoms or ju judicatories. Essentially, uh, their title comes from the fact that Sardinia up until really recently had been a basically administrative province of Rome for a very long period of time and then later under the Byzantines. Uh, unfortunately, the Muslims invaded Sicily around like 50 years ago. And when they did, they essentially cut off the Mediterranean. So, you know, there were Muslims in Africa, Muslims in Sicily, and it wasn't really safe to send boats uh, east anymore from Sardinia. Meaning that despite the fact that Sardinia was Byzantine, they were cut off from the empire, especially after uh, Robert of Apula kicked the last of the Byzantines out of southern Italy. Uh, they had a stronghold in Bari, and then he pushed them out with the help of the Pope, who... After the schism, which I believe happened around 10 years prior to the start date, the schism between the East and the West in terms of Christianity, the Orthodox Church, and the Catholic Church, 
uh, the Byzantines are obviously now pretty hostile with the West and the Pope and things like that. So Sardinia has been cut off from Byzantium. And as such, they still kind of maintain their traditions. I've been pointing at the map and just realized that I'm still on the internet browser. And I will read chat in a minute. Let me, let me monologue for a second here. Uh, so their kingdoms and, and during this time period they're referred to as kingdoms by the pope by the germans by the french everything like that all the different leaders uh, which you can kind of see on the right i hope i'm not covering this with my face let me check i'm not anyway so here's the map we're, we're playing the logodoro there's the arborea there's the cagliari who are our big rivals and then there's galora so these are all separate kingdoms but they the title they use is judgedoms because the when they were a byzantine administrated province there weren't governors, there weren't kings, there were judges who overruled theirs, which is where the name Jedi comes from, which is our title uh, in the game. So although we're independent, we're fully uh, recognized, and we're, you know, outside the power of the Byzantines, uh, we, we still have the leftover, like the cultural leftover from, obviously, the Byzantines, which is really interesting. You can also see that in the architecture, the culture, which is still very Byzantine in nature. Uh, there, there's been an attempt during this time period, which I read a bit about, where the Pope and the West were basically trying to bring them more into the Western culture by, you know, obviously giving them a lot of, uh, you know, like, monasteries and churches and, and, and papal uh, clergy who were able to push that more Western culture on them. Again, given the schism. So that's kind of just a background on Sardinia. I'm not going to go too in detail. We're going to make our own history. I'll keep going a second. Let me read chat. I don't want, I don't want to just ignore you guys since it's a single player. Um, uh, possibly Mage got ghosted. We'll see. How about you think too much? People barely know how to wipe their ass back then, let alone macro economy. Muslims, when talking about Muslim conquest, yeah, my ancestors fucked yours when they talk about European conquest. Filthy Imperials. I don't know what to say to that, Connor. I'm going to be real with you. Um, thank God I don't acquire my historical knowledge from the History Channel. What are you talking about? Like, the, the Nazi space program and their contact with aliens is well-documented in interesting parts of history. You gotta love the History Channel. Uh, don't get ghosted by girls. Just date the boys. Mm, that's not a bad idea. Uh, is there a new EU4 so starting sometime soon? There's a new EU4 game starting pretty soon. We're really low on staff in the Discord. We are starting an Ambinar game. So, Condor, you will be getting Ambonar content. It will be multiplayer, though. I am going to be joining the Ambonar game that we start in around two weeks from Sunday, I believe. I think I'm probably going to play Doors, because I want to, uh, I, I want to, you know, really get in character and drink ale while I, while I roleplay. So, anyway. What's up, Tall? Speaking of kings, weird time here in the UK now. Yeah, the Queen just died. Pretty crazy. Now, uh, the, uh, the ever-charismatic Charles will be king. I'm sure that won't cause any problems, so... All right, anyway, uh, we're playing the Taurus family. They're semi-old. They haven't had a lot of power for a long period of time. They kind of uh, really benefited, again, from the Byzantines uh, cutting, getting cut off from Sardinia. A lot of people were able to get power that they didn't uh, kind of imagine that they would. All the, most of the leaders of Sardinia during the start date are actually semi-well documented, primarily due to the papal uh, documentation. Wherein, like I said, the, the Pope was very involved with Sardinia and all of, like the states that used to be under Byzantine control. So the Pope uh, was always in contact with these Jedi's of Sardinia and was trying to again send like papal representatives to to bring them more towards the Western uh, Christian outlook. So as such, there's actually a fair amount of documentation. Again, it's a case of there's a lot of fascinating people in history, but we just don't know about them because there's no archives. I mean. Nowadays, we've got the internet, we've got books, we've got libraries, you know, we, we assume that, like, record-keeping happens, but really anything prior to not too long ago, 100, 200 years ago, that just didn't happen. So it is really lucky and nice when you actually do get people who, uh, you know, there actually is a bit of documentation. I say a bit of documentation. There's, there's a paragraph on Wikipedia, and I looked around, I could find really nothing else on them besides a few of these sources, so. Not much. But it's something to go off of. And that's more than can be said for a lot of historical figures. So that's kind of cool. Western Outlook. No, hammer. that's MD, not CK3. God damn it! You know what I mean? Western Western Christianity. Catholicism, not orthodoxy. Whatever. Listen, I play too much MD. It's a problem. We don't have to talk about it. What's up, Royal? How are you doing? I'm pretty sure there aren't elves in CK3. The Ambinar mod for CK3 will change that. And so the Lord of the Rings mod already has added it. So anyway. Uh, this is our father, Berisone the First Taurus. He he is our character's father. We are playing Judaic Andrea. He is 46. Uh, th this is incorrect. Yet again, Paradox didn't do the research. Berisone should not be dead right now. He should still be alive. He he died around uh, 1073. This is 1066. He should still be alive. He should still be the Jedi. Uh, Paradox didn't do the research, so he is dead right now. So we're playing his son. 
which is interesting. So again, this is our father. He's supposed to be around. Uh, well, there was something interesting about him. Yeah, so he was really religious. Like I said, he was really heavily involved, again, with like the the, the post-Byzantine era in Sardinia and really tried to cozy up uh, with the, uh, what are they called? The Pope, the papacy. The thing that's important to understand here is kind of where we stand politically. I'm going to give all this background, then we'll get into it, I promise. Pisa is obviously a, a trading nation. They're very wealthy, they're very renowned traders, and they do like to extend their influence. They've been very involved in the politics of Sardinia for a little while now. In fact, Jedi Constantinu of Galura, he is from, they don't show in the game, but the House Zori is one of the, the, the noble house, minor noble houses of Pisa. So Pisa is very involved with Sardinian politics. They back one of the Jedi's here. Cagliari is our main rival, uh, Jedi uh, Torshiter, who I originally planned on playing, but uh, I don't know, Logodoro looked harder and more interesting, so we're going to start as him. They have a huge advantage over us, but that's fine. Again, we're playing a grand campaign. We don't need to rush titles. So uh, they're our main rival. They're the real powerhouse of Sardinia, and in the eyes of many, they're kind of expected to, if... You know, the, the independent Jedi's don't continue to probably take control. So that's kind of our current circumstance. It's kind of where we're at. Uh, it's an interesting position. Beyond that, obviously, we have the Iberian struggle going, which we could involve ourselves with. If we get a, a title within Iberia, we will be an interloper into the Iberian struggle, and we could involve ourselves with that. That's an option. We've got France, which is dealing with a, a very young king and is very decentralized, of course. We got the HRE doing its usual kind of thing, you know, just very powerful, but very stagnant, the Kaiser. Southern Italy is an absolute mess. Uh, Robert of Apula is a Norman. Uh, Normans obviously being the descendants of Rollo in Northern France, uh, obviously. There's a very famous Norman right now who's about to go do something in England, so. <laughs> but anyway, uh, there was a group of Normans that kind of sought fame, fortune, power, glory, riches, all the above in Southern Italy. Because prior to the start date, the Byzantines controlled all of this. But the Normans invaded with a huge host and were managed to secure Capua, Salerno, Napoli, and then they went south. And Robert the Fox really carved it out. He had several brothers here as well. Uh, he wasn't expected to become the one to get a lot of titles. He's very smart, very... Uh, he's described as very physically attractive, very intimidating, very charismatic voice, all that kind of stuff. But his brothers were the one who carved out a lot of this. He kind of just... Uh, inherited a lot of it when they died, and then he finished the conquest and helped to push out some of the Muslims in Sicily. Uh, beyond that, we've got the few independent cities along uh, the coastline next to Napoli. Of course, the Pope, very powerful, as always, and we're in kind of his good graces right now, but, you know, it's it's the Pope. They, they change very quickly. And then, of course, Northern Africa. Prior to this, there was a lot of raiding of Sardinia uh, by, by uh, the Muslims. Anyway, I am going to stop war dumping on y'all. And we will play the game. But I wanted to give a little bit of an overview, background, all that kind of stuff, just so we understand. Because this is single player, but I am going to roleplay a little bit, just because I find it more interesting. So, anyway. You were joking. Dwarves and Goblins play uh, is special. Sorry, I'm writing, uh, writing a Bernie-like speech for a Minecraft server election. What kind of Minecraft server are you playing on, Tall? Alright, so we are at 46. We are a diplomat. We are a naive appeaser. We are trusting, zealous, and ambitious. So, and really interesting trait combo we're going to have to play out here. So we're very Christian, very holy. It kind of fits with like the history of uh, working with a pope or ambitious. So we might look to expand a little bit, but I want to rush it. So we'll see. And we're trusting. So if we make friends, we're going to trust them. We do have an heir. We do have a son. Marianu uh, de Torres. <sighs> very weird. He's cynical, vengeful, and brave. He's an amateurish plotter. Very bad stats. He's so uncharismatic. Just no social skills. And then there's our current wife of court. Uh, Judisa Benitia. She's very old. Lustful, compassionate, and greedy. I mean, could be worse. So, fortune builder. Alrighty, let's go ahead and get started. See how this goes. Again, I am really annoyed that we don't get to play with uh, the, the guy that we're supposed to. Barisone. So... All right, but anyway, this is a grand campaign, so we'll play for CK3. We're going to play for EU4. I am then going to wait, so we might have to wait a few months until the converter from EU4 to Victoria 3 comes out, because I do want to uh, have this grand campaign play for Victoria 3. So I will wait with this save uh, until that converter comes out. Hopefully we don't get issues there. Worst case scenario, I can do it to Vicky 2. I really don't want to. I want I want this grand campaign to be the, like one of the first ones to go for Vicky 3, so we'll see if we can do that or not. And then obviously Hoi 4, and then we will go to Stellaris. So, 
This is a long one. I will be doing this on Fridays. Every Friday from here on out is single player grand campaign. So I know a lot of people want me to do single player. I want to do single player too. So we're going to set aside Fridays for that. I do have the day off, so we're, we're chilling. So when uh, when this grand campaign is got, done, assuming I'm not completely burnt out and there is time before the summer grand campaign, I'll probably just start another one. So, yeah. What's up, Lollipop? What's up, Biscova? How y'all doing? I'll turn up that music a bit. I added a mod that was supposed to add the Medieval Total War playlist. Is there a music player in this? I can never remember. Don't think so. Like, Hoi 4 and stuff has that music player at the top, but I guess... CK doesn't. I never use in-game CK2 music, so let's go ahead and... Uh, there's a playlist I already got ready. We'll do... There we go, and then I will do this. Play that medieval Total War music. It's the good stuff. So our requests are only allowed if they are copyright free. I will say that. Medieval Total War is cop... Well, they don't go after you for it. So, just saying. Because I am throwing these on YouTube, of course. Ugh. We don't have a lot of income. Only 1.3. We're not very wealthy. Sasari is one of the more minor uh, cities within Sardinia during this time period. Cagliari is the big one. Cagliari is the big city in the south. It had been the seat of the Byzantine government on the island, uh, and in the past just, you know, very, very prized by the Romans. So we're one of the more impoverished regions of Sardinia. So although we're very ambitious, and we are, uh, we, we know that we don't have a lot of advantages going for us. We only have 480 uh, soldiers. Cagliari has 1,400. So unless we can secure some good marriages, which we're unable to right now, our, our son is already married. Uh, to, to a lowborn woman, actually. So unless we can get some more kids and some alliances, we may end up having to bend the knee to Cagliari. We'll see how this goes. They're our big rival. We're willing to do it, but, you know, not optimal here. Hamu got striked. I'm a sinner, apparently. Striked? On what? I mean, I get YouTube, like, copyright strikes a fair bit, but they just demonetize me. It's, it's fine. It's fine! There is Marianu of Orberia, and he has really good stewardship. And then there is Constantino again. He's with the Pisians, so we don't really like him too much. Well, let's go ahead and uh, try and sway Jedi Marianu. We're gonna we'll, we'll we'll take a trip down there and see if we can befriend him because we need some allies on Sardinia. We have no children by which to make alliances with, so we'll have to rely on our diplomacy. Thankfully, we have a lot of it. We have 19 diplomacy, so. Let's see if we can make some friends here. So why you went on copyright and Sinner is your character? Ah, uh, it's like I put it on YouTube, that's why. So they will block it sometimes if it is copyrighted. That is true. Every video is 50 cents, but that's not the issue. The issue is some copyrighted music will literally get my videos banned, and like I have two options. One, I can turn off the video, or two, I have to go edit it again and get rid of that song, which is oh, such a pain in the ass. It takes forever. All right, I was trying to get the spy master to discover secrets on Cogliari against our rival. He actually really likes us, though, because we're a diplomat. Isolationist. Also, our culture. Let's go over that really quickly, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to role play out the character traits. I'm going to roll out our history. I'm going to role play out, obviously, dynamics of our characters. But I also want to role play a bit of the culture dynamics, which have become so much more interesting in CK3. So we're obviously Sardinian culture. It is distinct. We diverged from Rome uh, around a long time ago. We are stalwart defenders. Defending that which is our one's own is paramount importance of this culture. We did, we've been defending in sea raids for a thousand years, so that's pretty deeply built into our people. We're also isolationists. This culture prefers to keep to itself and doesn't often look outside its own sphere. So we get a reduction in diplomatic range. And generally speaking, we're not going to be very like open for the most part to uh, other groups, other people, other cultures outside of Sardinia. So I am going to roleplay that out a bit unless there's explicit character uh, traits that go against that. We'll see, I guess. What's a truck in there? The Ukrainian offensive Kharkiv region has reached the Kupiansk already. The Russians are trapped in Izium now. I thought it was going to take another day or two before they reached there. Jesus Christ. Yeah, the Russians just can't hold them right now. 
What am I gonna play Croatia and CK3? I don't I don't know. They're interesting, but I don't have a, a an explicit desire to play them personally. We'll see. Um, once another DLC or two comes out, I will probably start to uh, play some more a lot more CK3. But we'll see. Maybe I'll put it on a list for the next grand campaign. There is no Easter Bunny, there is no Tooth Fairy, and there is no Queen of England. <laughs> Fucking tall, goddammit. Too soon, bud! Our house is obviously not very prominent as well. Oh, no, we're noteworthy? Safety under a truthful. Alright, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's fucking bullshit, that's a stupid fucking motto. Alright, first thing y'all gonna do. If anyone has recommendations for a good house motto, we're gonna replace this one, because this one's so dumb. Safety under a truthful, I don't, I don't like that. So if anyone has a good house name for our house, which will last hopefully a long time, go ahead and say it, and uh, we can choose the best one. So we'll, re we'll replace this. I don't like that. That's not a good house name or motto. The name's fine. The, mod the motto I don't like. So if you have one, go ahead. Swear to God, Jakey. Swear, swear to God. So we are pretty old too, we're 48, so a lot of our ambition, we still have it, but we haven't been able to do a lot. Our wife has only given us one child, and we have no grandsons right now, at all. We have no grandchildren. Mariano is still young, he's 26, he's got a very young wife of 20, but they haven't they haven't given us grandkids yet, so our line is not secure right now, which is not a place we want to be in. Obviously, Jedi Andrea would be very concerned about that, given that he's ambitious, so obviously he wants a future for his house, and without heirs, can't do that. While taking a drink from the stream near my residence, I observed the colorful, pretty pebbles deposited on the riverhead. What shiny little things these pebbles. Just heads up, I am using like 50 mods. So, you're gonna see a lot of events you're probably not used to if you play CK3 and a lot of mechanics that I've added on. I did test it, it works for the save converter, so... There's a fuckload of mods on this. Turkey, China, Pakistan, and Greece. If you have any daughters, you're required to call her Belana? Belana? How come? If she doesn't... Mage, I swear to fucking Jesus. Am I gonna spill the Pope hat? Probably at some point, it is tradition. Loyal to the crown, bloody to the sword. See, that's not bad, that's a good one. Wikipedia page? They don't have one. Um, Persona's son does not have a Wikipedia page, I don't think. Let me check again. No, he doesn't. His, I'll, I'll link his father. This is his father who's supposed to be alive right now, but Paradox didn't do the research. Ah, uh, Belena Torres. Uh, I know what you're saying. Okay, I got you now. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know, I know who you're talking about. I just didn't connect the, uh, the, the CK3 historical game to a Star Trek character, but I've, I've got it now. I'm up to date. Your mom is a hope. Robbers come from the seas. It's a popular certain name modem. At first, in many foreign powers that come to subjugate plunder of the Isles. Being isolationist and, and given that past, uh, that's a really good one. Robbers come from the seas. All right. We're going to make a poll with a couple of the really good ones. So if anyone wants, I'll give like a minute or two for recommendations. And then uh, we'll get a poll for that. And then y'all can decide our house motto. We'll do, we'll do it that way. Democracy. It never, it never goes wrong with decision making, you know. Sounds good. Judge of the Land is really good too. It's 13 in the can. <laughs> <laughs> How much you want to bet Princess Diana she had a boxing and having Jakey you said that meme like four times. Fuck the Byzantines. That does check out, but it's a little it's a little on the on the nose, you know. We do have five knights, nice. Not very good though. If we get attacked, we lose, like period. There's pretty much no one we can beat in combat right now. Cagliari won. Yes, they did, but they they were too strong and too uninteresting. So I chose uh, the northern one instead. Uh, Logodora. Cagliari was in too strong a position. This is a grand campaign. I am not going to race for titles at all. I'm also going to roleplay our house falling from grace more than once. So uh, I wanted just a more interesting, challenging start. And these guys have no soldiers, so I thought it'd be more interesting. 
Catholicism, not heresy. That's a good one. That's a good one. Sardinian Battle Royale. Uh, it, 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 oh. This this stream is not sponsored by Fortnite, so I'm gonna have to say no to that, unfortunately. We have no income. We have 1.3 currently, which is absolutely nothing. Our primary holding Sasari also has no upgrades currently, not a single one. So, yeah, we're we're pretty impoverished. We're we're not a very wealthy family. We're we'd probably be a minor noble family. We do have the Jedi title, Judic title, which is correlated to basically being a king, but really it's not. It's like we're a very minor noble essentially, with delusions of grandeur given our ambition, of course. What a can our attacks and you're dead within five years. Then we we are where we are, and then I'll switch to another character. It's kind of how how it goes. Master of the Sea is trader of land. That's a good one. All right. We got, we got a few. Last call for mottos. I'm going to put up a poll right now for the ones I like. Let me, let me pause the game so nothing happens. All right, we've got uh, Masters of the Seas, Raiders of... You, you guys know what it is. I can't type out the whole thing, so... Elizabeth won the Gulag and returned to the Land of Living. Thanks for the donation, Connors. God damn it. Okay, what were the other? There were a couple other good ones. I hope the natives won't fuck me up. I swear to God, Connor. All right, there were judges of the island. That's a good one. And then we've got robbers from from the sea. All right, looks good. There's the three options. Anyway, back to the game. That will be our house motto, so we're gonna build on this. Again, things in the beginning should be pretty slow. I, I don't want us to rush to major title. I optimally, I figure at some point we're probably gonna get conquered by Cagliari, who are our rivals. And assuming they don't like unland us, uh, we're gonna basically have to role play like a minor count for a while, which would be kind of fun. I don't like just rushing for big things. It, it's more interesting with a buildup. It can be boring at times, you know, Sometimes there's not a lot going on and you're minor, you know, you can't do your court affairs and stuff, but in the long run, I find the slower to build up the power, the, the, the better it feels and the more interesting things are, you know? Character development. If you get where you're going right away, it's not going to be as interesting and you won't be as interesting, right? So, yeah. Do I did is Northumbria. Murder your brother? This is a joke one, but the model should be, please don't attack us, Kegliar. That's accurate. I mean, that's the general mood. The funny thing is, they really like us. Uh, the Jedi Academy Gliari, he really likes us. I mean, we have very high diplomacy, to be fair, but... Yeah. And we like him, too. I mean, we... we the only person we really don't like is Constantinu of Galora. And uh, in the roleplay, we're going to say that's because, again, they, they are basically a semi-vassal of Pisa, given their royal family. So, we don't like that Italian influence... Italian influence on the on the Sardinian island. So, what's of note? When did I murder my brother? Wasn't you who killed your brother in like the England game? I've been corresponding with your chancellor Lissandru. I must say that I have come to see you in a new light. Perhaps you are even someone that I could one day call my friend. Wonderful, wonderful. Oh, he really likes us now. Look at that. He's terrified of us. We have dread. <laughs> what? Why is he scared of us? Masters of the sea, uh, traders of the land. All right. Sounds good. Is it not going to let us? Oh, come on. What the fuck is this? Can we really not change our motto? I have a lot of mods on right now. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. I can edit this in the save file after today's game. Where's my pen? I gotta write that down. I can edit it. I just won't be able to do it right now. God damn it. So many notes. All right. Edit. Else motto. Raiders of the land. 
I will get that put into the save file before next session. But unfortunately, the game's not gonna let me. Yeah, single player note. It did glitch, it did glitch. Like I said, I have a lot of mods on right now, so we may run into some problems, but it's worth it because they all add some pretty cool stuff. All right, we have successfully befriended one of the Jedi's. Let's go ahead and try and befriend our enemy. Again, we do see uh, Cagliari as our rival. Uh, they, they historically were rivals, and our families don't like each other much. But we are a diplomat, and we know the uh, the phrase, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. So we're going to try and befriend the Jedi Cagliari. Given his massive army, well, we'll have to hope that he doesn't take, you know, action against us. Let's check out, Jakey. Can you form Italy? I believe so. I could be wrong. We can form the Kingdom of Sardinia, and we can form the Empire of Italia. We can't form the Kingdom of Italy, but we can form the Empire. So, that is an option down the line if we want to. I am going to go four speed. It is single player, so we can actually make use of not going speed two, which is beautiful. Obviously, we'll pause for events and things like that, but still. We've got a lot of ground to cover, so... House legacies are bugged. Uh-oh. Well, that sucks. It's fine. If this goes well, then conquer Libya. Maybe. I'm not gonna rush it. What's up, Finn's there? Nice. What the? The Sardinia start a certain kind of pain. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. It's just we're isolationists on an island in the Mediterranean. We're all alone. No, no big issue. Oh man, that income is so low. Can we can build a trading port, can't we? Yeah. We're gonna save up for the trade port first. The first thing we're gonna do, he's ambitious. He now understands he's old. He understands his line is not secure. So we need to start developing a, a way to get some manner of power. We can't compete militarily, so maybe we can compete economically. So we are gonna go ahead and get a trade port as soon as we can. We're gonna upgrade to Sari and make it into a proper city, not a little backwater. It has come to my attention that some local commoners are moving to Cagliari, the capital of my kinsman, Jedi Torshiter. Wait, we're related? Hold on. Oh shit, we're related! We're a cadet branch of his house, House Gunala. Damn. Alright. Our locals newly settled or not praised uh, me can truly do no harm to his perception of me. We do not have the gold to spend, so I'm not going to do that. Grand campaign indeed. What's up, Curse? If you go on to rule the lines of Italy too and go on conquering spree, you should basically be the Sardinian version of Napoleon. Possibly. I'm not going to map paint. We're doing a grand campaign. Map, pa map painting is literally just like going to ruin the game because we'll can conquer everything and there'll be nothing left to do. So we're going we're gonna to take things a lot slower. This is an RP Grand Campaign, Crusader Kings 3, EU 4, then I'm going to wait for the Converter, and then convert to C uh, Victoria 3, and then Hoi 4, and then Stellaris. All the way through. What's up, Scoby? You know, I was just saying a uh, dumb little ankido. Ancido? Jesus Christ. Yeah, I know, I know what you mean. I have no idea what to do for the next 50 days-ish until Vicky 3 comes out. Um, ju just imagine it. Just close your eyes and imagine Vicky 3. Damn. Duchess Matilda looking fine as always. Goddamn. Italians in space, the whore. Listen, we're gonna bring the pizza. We're gonna bring the pizza and the calzona to the to the aliens. They need to get a little bit of culture, you know. So, Solaris a great campaign is kind of unnecessary, perhaps to you. I I think it's fun. I think it's the natural end uh, to to a grand campaign. Personally, a lot of people only go to Hoi Four, which is totally fair, but. I think, I think Stellaris makes it more interesting. Most of the people that do Grand Campaigns uh, conquer the map because it's warring very quickly. Yeah, why the fuck would you do that? <laughs> like, we're gonna conquer. Oh, we're gonna conquer. We're gonna get ambitious, brave 
wrathful leaders who will take us on giant murder sprees and then i am going to role play out the downfall of it and we're going to lose all our territory so if we conquer i will ensure that we have a fall after so it's interesting because people don't just conquer and hold their titles it doesn't happen we're going to get a shitty ruler he'll make us lose almost everything and then we'll have to deal with it so anyway Honestly, if I was an alien ruling an interstellar empire, some spacefaring Italians presented to me with some damn pizza, I would submit it immediately. They understand that we have superior culture and cuisine. You know, it's it's the natural natural step. The aliens are gonna offend the Italians by adding their own stupid shitty thing on top of the pizza, and then the Italians conquer the aliens. That's true. As soon as they put squid tentacles onto the pizza, they will be conquered. That's true. Especially if the person presenting the pizza is Duchess Matilda. Oh, that's the way to do it. I really like playing Stellaris in great campaigns because I like the possibility of millennia of history being totally destroyed. True. Absolutely. I've done great campaigns by myself when I haven't streamed them like a couple years ago where I went to Stellaris and I got absolutely just murdered by aliens very quickly. I didn't restart it because I was like, well, you know, all this history and I lose, but it's how it goes, you know? You can restart it, of course, but I just kind of felt like, you know, we did get a grandson! Ah, oh, fantastic! Galo de Torres, our grandson! We are gonna give him a stewardship education. Again, we are gonna try and build the future of Logodoro through economic commerce and trading. Given that we are in the middle of the Mediterranean and could easily become a trading hub, we are gonna make sure that our grandson is able to administer our trading city when he comes of age. So, that is wonderful. We're gonna actually take him under our wing if our son will let him us as well. Let's, let's see if it'll let us. Wonderful. All right. We're going to teach the lad. We're going to bring him up. Teach him the ways of rulership. One day, he will have this throne himself. So we got we to gotta make sure he learns. That's a cool thought, actually. Remember, do, don't do do balkanization or I'm going to be really mad. I doubt it. What's your favorite education? Intrigue you can do more you can do really wild interesting stuff with intrigue to be honest, but in a roleplay game I don't I try not to bleed with what I want to do, but do kind of just you know what the rulers would do But definitely intrigue. How about you junior? How about you? Why not go orthodox? We might depends on how things go uh, He's very zealous and he converted he's very much with the uh, with the Catholic Christian after the schism So it makes no sense for him to go orthodox, but in the future we might convert you never know I'm not gonna force things a certain way. Stewardship does give you a lot of money, but I find it to be kind of boring, honestly. While taking a walk outside, I found a very beautiful flower. However, as I went over to make, uh, take a closer look at it, potentially to pick it up and keep it, I misstepped and accidentally stomped on it. <laughs> 13 stress. Fuck. This man's just having a mental breakdown seeing a flower. He's like Nietzsche seeing a horse beaten, I swear. I actually could make a mod list cursed. You know, I forgot to do that last night. I was going to. Let me let me do that. Hold on. Bear with me. Let me make the mod list for this campaign. Actually, no, I, I, it'll interrupt things. I'll I'll do it tonight. Make mod list. CK3. I will make it and I will have that linked for the next stream, I promise. There's like 50 mods. There's a lot. It would take me a minute to do it right now. Pineapple on pizza is heresy of the highest order. I'm Swedish. I grew up on nasty food. You did. Pickled herring, man. Jesus Christ. Seduce every queen possible. It is nice to do a character like that once in a while. Just not all the time, you know? Why not start in 876? Because 600 years of CK3 is actual cancer. That's why. And the 1066 start I find to be more interesting. I'm playing a mega campaign as Ireland, but the entirety of CK3 getting kicked repeatedly in the nuts by the English. The Scottish and the Vikings, Jesus. If only Paradox would have a game set in the era that was the rise of the Roman Republic. We don't talk about that game. I don't I don't acknowledge it. The first time it happened, I barely even gave it a moment's stop, but my Marshal Curadora Felictu has grown bolder. His challenges no longer pass unannounced at the council table. He is testing my limits. The others are sure to follow unless I give him a taste of his own medicine. He really doesn't like us. We're gonna blame everything on him. We're going to blame everything on him. The Family Guy song I requested slaps. That's nice. This is this is a historical game. Um, I play House Moonso and reformed and went into feudalism. Nice. They're one of the Scandinavian uh, groups, right? I think. Croatia and Hungary, and I want to see you do an Uber reverse card on the bastard annexing our line of CK3. 
Emperor actually has really good mods for it. I know it has good mods. I refuse to play it. I don't I don't want to support like Paradox just abandoning games. So Alright, we have the money. We are gonna invest in a trade port. We obviously have just a bunch of ships in the dock, but it doesn't really do much, and all we can do is fish off of it. All the trade currently comes into Sardinia through Cagliari and their great port in the south. We are gonna build one in the north in Cesari to rival it and hopefully get some of that trade from France and the HRE, given that we are a more convenient port for them. So Cagliari is much more uh, strategically uh, valuable given it's in the southern Mediterranean, but we can make ourselves a trading port of our own. So we're gonna, we're gonna start on that. CK3 is missing some of the mechanics in CK2 like societies, but it's a much better game overall. And it's gonna be a way better game given some like good DLCs, I think. It is simpler in some ways, but that's just because it doesn't have some of the features like societies and stuff, I think, honestly. All right, we now have the Jedic of Cagliari also loving us. He, we're really close with him. So we are going to go ahead and also uh, improve opinion. We're going to spend some time corresponding with the Jedic of Galura. That every single one of the other kings of Sardinia will be on very good terms with us. Meaning despite our very small army, very small army, we will be able to hopefully uh, develop the trading city of Sasari unimpeded. We want to try and maintain those good relations, given that's really our only strength is our is our diplomacy and charisma, and try and use that to develop ourselves. So, things are looking pretty good here. Our son is going to be an absolute train wreck. He has no diplomatic ability, meaning when we die, and we know that when our son takes power, he's going to probably hurt a lot of these uh, a lot of these relationships we built. You should take the mines in the south of Cagliari. One day, we're not going to rush it though. You should take notes on the best of the Sardinian kings in CK3 and EU4, so in Hoi 4 you have some good take names. That's true, Fencer. Musa was a Swedish family until something, something Denmark. Yeah, I gotcha. My spies have informed me about a hunter causing a ruckus at the local tavern. The man has been spending large amounts of gold and bragging loudly about the great deal he struck with a fancy lady in pearls and silk. Apparently he drew a map on the local hills of an unknown noblewoman. The spies think the lady must be scheming against me or one of my subjects. What are our traits again? We are ambitious, zealous, and trusting. Unknown noblewoman. We have no connections to her, so we'd probably trust him then. So we'll go ahead and uh, take that into account. Adamite shall prevail. I I'm not trying to get some Twitch TOS break, so I don't think we'll do that. We'll see that. So we know that kingdom wasn't really centralized until the 13th century. This is a very little concrete information on the early Swedish kings. Yeah, like even Bjorn Ironside is pretty much all speculation. There's not a lot of... I mean, there's some stuff that came later. <laughs> the 100 Techniques of Love. She was a wonderful harlot. Is this my bishop? It's my bishop. What the fuck? So that was a hearty laugh. Never paid for a better woman to keep me company at night. As, as a zealous man, we'd find this to be very gross. I am having a small feast with some courtiers, and a lusty man is recalling an encounter at a brothel <laughs> to a while back. She said she learned a hundred different techniques in the art of love, and it was worth every coin. I had to not only have her demonstrate every one of those techniques. Dude, you're a fucking bishop! What the fuck, man? Who knew intimacy could be such a philosophical art? Some of my courtiers listen attentively, fascinated, if not a little too excited. Others look irritated and offended at his remarks. Yet, uh, many others just try to awkwardly avoid eye contact with him as he explains the hundred techniques. We're zealous, so we would find this to be horrifying. So, we're gonna tell him to, uh, stop talking about these crude and vulgar subjects! That is a very lore-accurate bishop for this time period, though. I, w I will give the game that. That's very accurate. You're playing as Bjorn Ironsides. Great-great-grandson. Nice. Yeah, the first one to be considered to have not been a legendary is debated to be either Eric the Victorious or Olaf Skotskunum. I'm saying that wrong. I apologize. Have you seen the new EU4 DLC? Yes, the northern the northern one, right? Scandinavian one. Yeah, Commodore. It's a that's a very that's a very naughty bishop. The Pope isn't bad. He's a journaler. He's a scholar. He's a mastermind philosopher. He's just he's forgiving and compassionate. The Pope is fantastic. It's just 
the fucking bishop we have who is forgiving lazy and brave very very poor learning fire is that so we can't we can't get rid of bishops uh during the this time period that's actually a whole crisis in the catholic church which is um I want to say investiture, but I don't know if that's right, which is whether or not the king gets to uh, decide who the bishop is or whether the pope does. So we actually can't do that right now. I'm more impressed that he was able to remember all 100 techniques in every intricate detail. Yeah, it's pretty impressive, but he's a goddamn heathen. Listen, uh, sex is just for procreation. We're a zealous man. We, we know this to be true. You watched the video on the Swedish missions and it was actually really good. Yeah, of course it is. It's a Swedish game company. You know they're going to put like so much effort into it. The Dark Ages actually refers to a series of popes who were rather sinful. Is that real, Commodore? Because that sounds real, but also sounds like it might not be true. I can't tell. Ah, by fire, you mean burn to death. That's true. I'm going to go start some more coffee, go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Secular Obscure? Okay, she brings up his browser history. Investiture, who controls the bishop appointments? Thank you, Commodore. Yeah, it was a really big deal in this time period. Uh, I think it was the Germans, or was it the French? One of them really did not want the, the Pope appointing people, so it was, it was a huge issue. I know a fair amount of people got excommunicated over it, so. Going way forward, the White Russia feels like being constantly flashbang whenever going into Eastern Eurasia. Oh, that's fair. HRE versus the Pope. Yep, thought so. Kaiser does not want to be dealing with that. He's a skilled tactician. That's rare. A competent uh, emperor. Those, those come along uh, once in a blue moon, pretty much. It was the Germans. Yep. Marianu has been murdered! Oh god, what could you do this to Marianu? For I have sinned. Why did you not punish me instead? He was blameless, my perfect son. Life had so much more in store for him. Our son just got murdered. Fuck. Fuck. We only have one heir. Oh. Well, the Taurus dynasty could be off to a very short start, folks. Um, this is it. This is, this is, if he dies, it's a game over. Or we have to switch to someone else. Fuck. <laughs>
<laughs> um. We're 55. We're not pumping out any more kids. Our wife, oh man, she's well past menopause, so. Obviously, we would be absolutely stricken with grief and absolutely horrified. What's up, Jimmy? Given the fact that we're ambitious. Uh, we, we can see everything we've tried and built slip through our fingers. We built, we built a beautiful port in Cesare. We, we've done so much to improve the quality of life of our people. And how are we, how is it returned to us? The murdering of our poor son, Marianu. We're being honest, he wasn't, he wasn't a very competent lad, but he's still our son and he was our heir. He was supposed to inherit. Vip, vipers everywhere. Everywhere. We'll have to keep Galu very close. If, if he dies, our dynasty will come to a very, very quick end. Oh, man. Thought you were a Greek. When did he switch to these guys happen? You mean the grand campaign from the summer? I haven't done that in like three months. It's been a while. We, we ended that campaign for unfortunate reasons. Yeah, we'll have to switch to uh, Galura or Cagliari or something like that. So we'll see. Probably the fourth as Pope Gregory the seventh it was. Ah, okay. Alrighty, off to a already uh interesting start. We can ask the Pope for gold. We'll go ahead and do that. He is still alive? What? Thurisona is still alive. He's just not in charge of Logodoro. Oh, fuck. I didn't realize that. Okay, so the game did get it right. Yeah, he is still alive. He's just not, uh, he's just not Jedi. Okay. He's also too old to have kids, so this is not looking good. I fully blame the bishop for the murder of Marianu. Only a man of that degenerate character would murder a man like Marianu. We definitely suspect him, given that we publicly shamed him. So we're gonna we're gonna keep a very close eye on uh on the bishop. After indulgences, the other issue was the RCC was uh Simone Ikea selling religious offices. Yep. How long how long after this did that become an issue, Commodore, or was it just already beginning? What happened to the last Grand Campaign? I'm so confused. I haven't paid attention to the Grand Campaign streams in a while. Uh, we had to stop them because some uh, some people in that game basically just meted and ruined the game with development uh, meta and then tech meta. So they, they killed the game for us. So we had to stop it. And then we just didn't have the staff to keep it going too. So very unfortunate end. We'll be starting another multiplayer Grand Campaign next summer, but we are going to lock it behind the tiered role. So you have to have a pretty, you have to have one of the higher ranks to play in it so that we don't get problems like that. As their genetic white vassals owe me their allegiance. My word is law. But how much is obedience without devotion worth? In times of crisis, a slow response or a half-hearted effort can lead to disaster. Can I afford such a risk? We can just beat the shit out of our marshal. We are trusting, so we're going to try and win their loyalty. Neither really got addressed until the Reformation and the Council of Trent. Ah, gotcha. Okay. We are going to upgrade the trade port again. We have a, just a very small harbor. Humble Harbor sits at the shore, allowing ships to load off their cargo without much effort. So instead of a fishing port, we now have a very minor trade port. And we're going to see if we can get to a, a larger kind of fishery and larger trading port in our life. We're getting kind of old. We, we know we don't have much longer for this world. We're doing our best to, to develop our capital, Cesare, as we can, and try and guide our young grandson and heir. Not looking great. I'm gonna go with Groom to Rule, given that we are actively trading our son. He just got rowdy. Alrighty. I have a mod on that changes how education works, so it may it may be a little bit weird, just heads up. More fish for the Sardinian people. Maybe I'll, I'll buy a Garum factory? What is that, Finster? Are you playing with a default game or rules, or have you changed stuff? Default rules, but I have a lot of mods on. I didn't change the default rules. I looked through them and didn't really want to change anything, so 
I just kind of I kept it as it was It's not like in that grand campaign we did where we where that setting got turned on to make everyone fucking not straight <laughs> Which we accidentally changed the setting for the summer grand campaign So it was more likely that non straight people would appear and that was just an absolute clusterfuck. So didn't do that this time Wonderful, our marshal's doing a good job. We have completely swayed him as well. Wonderful. We are on very good relations with almost all the Jedi's. Oh, no, not him. Jedi uh, Orsasar, we are not on good terms with. His father died, Marianu, who was our cousin. Again, of another house, but still related to us. I guess all the, all the leaders, for the most part, of Sardinia are related, so... We'll try and befriend him as well. Fermented Roman fish sauce. Might be a bit out of fashion, 1077 though. Possibly. I mean if it's if it's still on the Byzantine cooking menu, you never know. My entire bloodline was asexual in the Grand Campaign. All my leaders were homosexual in the Grand Campaign. It was ridiculous. I've never seen a character that's not straight. They they happen. It's not very often, but they do happen a fair bit. It's come to my attention that some local commoners are moving uh, to Oristano. This is the same event. We are not going to pay for this. Because we need to upgrade our trading port. Much more important. We need a keep. Which we do not have the battlements yet. Algerian hybrid culture. Well, there's a separate Algerian uh, culture now. Interesting. That's cool. Well, I'm very Bedouin still, but distinct. Nice. I love how they do the culture system in CK3. The, the culture system in CK3 is like why I knew that CK3 was going to be really good. Like, it's just so impressive. What the hell happened in England? William the Conqueror did manage to secure the throne of England. William the Conqueror did win. His son, King Robert, inherited, and his second son formed a separate kingdom, Hampshire, including his old titles in Normandy. So England is split in half right now. Damn. That's wild. Sancho died as well. Wow. Not before eating part of Leon, though. Alfonso is still alive. So is Garcia. Al Muqtadir still alive. Yaya died. Interesting. Wow. Robert's still hanging on, too. The Taurus Shiori was the family that controlled Sardinia in 867. I didn't, I didn't research them. I didn't see anything about them. Yeah, hot pink, though. Goddamn, that color. I know. This is, this is a wild England. So I guess William won, uh, obviously, the invasion, and then it got split between his two sons. Did he only have two sons? He had a third son, William the Red. He was given the earldom of Buckinghamshire as well. So his eldest son got England, his second eldest son got the kingdom of Hampshire, and his third uh, youngest son who's very good steward, uh, he, he received the, uh, the earldom. Damn. The politics of England are pretty wild. If this means to see a week in England and Spain, this could be very bad for Catholicism. Yes, it could. William the Red is William Rufus, a.k.a. King William II. Really? Huh. Politics are pretty wild. And then Byzantium's just imploding currently. Holy crap. Oh, he's in bad shape. The Seljuks are really gonna push. Not looking good for the Byzantines right now, but it's not our problem. They're not in charge of us anymore. Wonderful. We'll go ahead and upgrade our port again. We may be an ambitious man, but at the end of our life, we have only really I mean, we've upgraded the port of our main city massively, such that it probably even contends the port of Cagliari now. Let's look. 
That's a tier one harbor. We are about to have a tier two harbor. So we are about to have the biggest port in Sardinia, which does open up a lot of options for us. The De Lacon family took control of the Duchy of Sardinia in 941. You're not even saying uh, Hampshire and Buckinghamshire correctly. Linzar, have you not already realized that I'm unable to pronounce literally anything, man? Unle unless it's like a basic American word, I'm not going to pronounce it correctly. I, and I gave up trying to do that a long time ago. My brother is genuinely said about the cream dying yesterday and he keeps uh, drunk calling me. Jesus, Scoby. Prefidious Americans. Ah. Oh boy. Big commission and epic. We have the money for it. We'll go ahead and do it. What I need is a classical tale of grandeur of my family. A poem about the origins of the Torakitoru. I tried. Dynasty. And how we are destined for greatness. I only need someone who knows how to tell a story. We have a mastermind philosopher scholar. And then we have a forgetful skilled tactician. Yeah, let's uh, let's go with uh, let's go with the scholar. Bor Bortolu. I know I'm saying that wrong too. We're gonna try. We're gonna try and befriend him. We're gonna micromanage our epic. Obviously, we want it to to portray us and our family really well. So we're gonna try and befriend him, and uh, we're gonna try and really just get heavily involved with the writing of our of our epic. You know. My family epic seems to be progressing well, and some lines already sound like they are quoted for decades to come. But Bartolu has a lot of questions about the focus of the story. It would be easier to answer if he wrote it all first. Then I could tell him what I dislike about it. But he insists he needs answers now. Ancestral claims. Me and my destiny. Family history. We'll go We'll go family history. We're old. We know that we're coming to an end. You know, we're, we're pretty old. So we'll do family history. I'm British and I say it the exact opposite, uh, same way as Hamu. Hell yeah, Finn Stairs. Hell yeah. So what do you call the state that's uh, called New Hampshire? You mean New Hampshire? Same thing again. We're going to blame everything on him. Actually, we'll give him an impossible tax. I get people who don't like the Queen and people who don't like the British monarchy. I don't know how to feel about the people who are metaphorically dancing on her grave right now, though. I mean, if you're anyone who's not English in Britain, I do understand it, but... Yeah. New Hampshire? Oh, it's Hampshire. <laughs> okay. That was like Shire. Hampshire. Yeah, fair. Hampshire. All right, I could say that. That's fine. When Curadora fell least to, tried to complete his tax thoroughly, I scolded him in front of everyone, and when he hurried to get done in time, I displayed his sloppy work for all to see. He bent himself backwards to please me, yet I had never acknowledged his efforts. Now he remains quiet, eyes cast low. Wonderful. We manipulate this man into, uh, into obedience. Definitely no ethical problems with that. As long as you don't get Yorkshire wrong, you're fine. Benita's sneezing was loud enough to attract the attention of everyone nearby, including myself. Some chuckled, others shake their heads in disapproval at the reaction to this. I usually sneeze in threes, she explains. <laughs> Our wife is now known for sneezing too loud, which reduces her diplomacy. Fuck, that's brutal. York, Yorkshire! Yorkshire. How do you, how do you say, Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. 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 Something like that. Close enough. That is actually a very good sauce. I haven't had that in a long time though. I do like Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire, Jesus Christ, now it's fucking me up. Worcestershire sauce. Okay, never mind. I'm not saying that word anymore. This isn't fun anymore! Bortolu has been caught trying to sneak off from his duties. Thankfully, a guard recognized him as he passed the gates. It is exhausting work! He defends himself. Day and night, I am benevolent lord. I am desperate for a few days rest. We are... Trusting, so we'll let him do that. We're gonna have to pay him for a break? We can't afford that. And we're ambitious. We're gonna chain him to his work table. Fuck. It's 1080, we can do whatever we want. We're, we're Jedi. 
Worcestershire, Worcestershire is great on dim sum. Worcestershire sauce is great and tongue twister, let's go. Say it 10 times fast, Scoby. Imagine your wife going down in the history books as Judisa, what's her name, the, the loud sneezer. That's probably what she'll be remembered for, let's be honest. Pride of the family. My spy master Cassian seems to be the latest person to have read excerpts of my family epic. Your great-great-grandmother was a fascinating and resourceful figure, she tells me. If you let it be known that you are even half as underhanded as she, perhaps uh, people will think twice before acting against you. Well, that's fair. The blood of that snake is flowing in my veins. It's a little harsh, but, uh... Alright. Hey, well, I can't say it as my accent literally doesn't let me say it. I could uh, say it ten times fast. Yeah, same here, but, you know. Uh, no, that's uh, how you say it. I had a British streamer that was from Yorkshire, and he got mad when I said Yorkshire. Ah, okay. I, I got gotcha. you. I just know I always say things wrong, and I apologize for it, but it is what it is. In the Declaration of Independence, Americans have the unalienable rights to mispronounce things. You're goddamn right, Commodore. You're goddamn right. Just like Europeans have the right to be properly educated and speak English better than Americans and British people, but, you know, it's just, it's, it's what it is. Bunnelu is telling my marshal, Curadore Felicitu, about several exciting details he has discovered about my ancestors. Now I believe the part with the dragon might actually be true since. It is fascinating to be sure, but does he not have a grand poem to complete? As for this particular an an anecdote. We'll go with that. And then my wife sees it correctly without even thinking about it. It's fair. Don't apologize when you pronounce pronounce. Tell the Brits to go suck it when you say it wrong. What has completed the family epic? What a glorious poem he has composed. It is high drama, moral quandaries, and tense duels. Everything my family has been forged from is in there. Even the part of the dragon, seemingly so far-fetched, has become a touching moment outlined in the destiny of my house. All right, we have the Taurus Romance, which gives us prestige, vassal opinion, and a hostile scheme resistance. Not bad. Not bad at all. We're gonna, we're gonna keep it with us at all times. After all this time Bartolu has spent in my court and how well he has gotten to know me, I feel strange that he is about to depart. I have other places to go and other stories to tell, he ex tries to explain. We're going to befriend him and keep him at court. He's a, he's a good guy. He's so learned, my god. Perhaps it would be even worse getting our, our young grandson to study with him for a little time. Be nice for him to become a little bit more learned. But we're gonna we're gonna send him uh, for a year to study with Bartolu. Bartolu? Yeah. Well, we'll send him there for a year. When he when he turns nine, we'll take him back under our wing. Bromance, absolutely, absolutely. You're almost done upgrading that port. Wonderful. We have a very prosperous trading port and fishing village now in Cesare. We need to get battlements. We're not the head of our culture. Ooh, long ways to go on that. Hmm. Oh, we can do the befriend scheme. That's definitely worth getting. Let's see if we can try and befriend Jedi Toro Sheeter of Kegliari. Let's challenge him to a game. How smart is he? Oh my god, let's not wager anything. <laughs> I don't think we'll win. I was a little too fixated with cleaning my teeth earlier today and brushed with too much intensity, resulting in some slight bleeding from my gums. As a result, my teeth are covered in blood. Unfortunately, I have to meet with my court soon, even though I look like a man-eating bloodthirsty monster. That's unfortunate. You should have told me that now. I'm going to bring up uh, every stream. Finster, are you a good cook? I didn't know that. I'm not surprised. I 
We'll use our stewardship knowledge. And we lost. No surprise. He's got 34 learning. We are trusting, zealous, and ambitious, so we'll be nice about it. And he liked that. Wonderful. Now let's see if we can befriend him. Just clean them? I'm a good cook when cooking for others. Uh, just hand them in seed champ. Ham and cheese sandwiches for me. Dude, I understand that. I... I struggle to make myself motivated to cook for myself because it's just like, you know, I, I can get by with just something really simple. But if I'm like dating someone or, you know, families, there's a lot of family around and stuff, I definitely like to cook. I'm not bad at it, but I can never motivate myself to, like to cook for myself. It's just so hard to do that. I can cook for other people all day long, you know, but it's interesting. I do the most cooking when I'm dating, I think, honestly, because like if I'm dating someone, I really like them. I like to, you know, cook for them, but... Not for myself. Also, I'm going to send my smoke alarm to God if it goes off while I'm making steak one more goddamn time. Just pull it out when you're cooking. If your house burns down, that's unlucky, but, you know. I've been searching and searching, but Jedek Torshiter and I seem to have absolutely nothing in common. Without any common ground, how do I even begin to build a friendship? We're going to get really stressed doing this, but that's fine. Oof. Dark thoughts. Guilt and shame have been plaguing me as of late. All of my sins, my flaws, my failings, these dark thoughts distract me from my responsibilities and keep me awake at night. Same here. I feel like I must do something to put an end to this mental anguish. What could possibly be? All right, we can beat ourselves or we can become a drunkard or we can get more stressed. You know, ale is pretty nice. I gotta say, ale is pr pretty. Why did our hair do? Are we going bald? Oh my God, we're going bald. <laughs> the drunkenness and the alcohol is uh, has done quite a number on our on our head. Fuck. We're balding from stress. I love that so much. That's so accurate. That's so accurate. Holy shit. We became alcoholic, got really stressed, and had a lot of hair loss. That's accurate. What's up, uh, Tingle? How you doing? Hammer, hammer baldy. Fuck. That's hilarious. Oh my gosh. And accurate. That's where hair loss comes from. It's all stress. After laborious preparations, I was finally able to spend some time alone with Jedi Torshider. I'm saying it wrong every time, but in different ways. In the end, distance was not a great hurdle for me to overcome in order to earn Jedi Torshider's trust and friendship. We both learned a lot about each other during our encounter, so much so that we parted as friends. Wonderful! We are now friends? with the king of Cagliari. I'm going to try and befriend all of the kings of Sardinia. Diplomacy is our strength, nothing else. So we must utilize it. That's why they have that crown to hide balding. That, that is true. It's true. I like my ribs smoked and then I drench it in barbecue sauce and gravy. Never knew the game used your webcam and printed your body into the game. You're talking shit, but this dude got dripped. That's all I'm saying. Even with the balding, he's got drip. He's got he's got uh, that kingly aura to him, you know. Eh, eh. Oh, no I I'd, I'd be happy to have that. So no, you think you're insulting me, but really, well, it's a compliment. You're Thank you for the resub, Tardis. Thank yeah, you, man. You One of the best uh, grand stretch streamers on the platform, no doubt about it. But uh, if you can't watch that guy, watch Hammurabi. <laughs> Fair, man. Thank you for the resub. Appreciate, it, dude. Hope you're doing well. Hope hope life is good over there in uh after after the you know recent events in Britain. I'll have to try that. I call Car Cagliari because the gold mine is the money. Of course, it's very valuable, but this is a roleplay game and we're doing a grand campaign, so I'm not in a rush for it. We're ambitious, so we would want it, but we don't have the troops for it, and I am not going to abuse marriage mechanics in this uh, CK3 game to conquer it. So I want to do the slow build up to power. That's what I'm, I'm in it for that. So we're going to we're gonna do that really slow build. God fucking damn it. We have no one else. If he dies, it's a game over. This is it. We got no one else. There's no one else in our family. Fuck. He's not even of age. He's only 10. Yeah, I think you know. 
44 is gonna be a clusterfuck. Also, we're gonna do be the African colonizer boy. He says, soul build up playing with an ambitious man and it instantly killed him. Yes, yes. The CK3 gods did not like what I had to say. I don't blame them, so. No, we're not balding, not yet. That's that's a plus. Jedek Andrea of Logodoro has found peace in Christ's embrace at 62 years of age. He drank himself to death. An old man, he lived a long and fulfilled life. Jedi Galu ascends to the throne merely 10 years old. He will need to rely on the council during his first years of rule. Oh boy. We're impatient? Same, unironically. I definitely have that trait in real life. Fuck. Poor guy. Uh, rowdy. We are going to immediately not be under Bartolu anymore. We didn't like him. We don't like learning. We don't like reading. So we're going to find someone else uh, to teach us. We are going to become an expert with a spear. We are going to be a frontline commander because we are ready. And we are going to be educated by... Our mother for a little while she's really good with intrigue so uh when we first obviously take over we're gonna want someone we can trust behind us so we're gonna we're going to our mother is our spy master and she's gonna teach us that's realistically what would happen so we're also and yeah, we can't when we're older we're gonna try and sway uh our marshal and see if he can train us a bit in combat you need a martial character not necessarily if we want to just conquer a bunch of people sure but i'm not in any rush for that He's role-playing a 10-year-old. Yes. Infant kings, best kings. True. Even if they had regrets, they must not have a lot to take in, being monarch and all that. I'd skin 15 deer by the time I was 10. I never shot them. I just did the skinning. Please tell me they were not alive, Scobie. Please tell me they weren't alive. All right. When we get uh, five more gold, we're going to meet our peers. That's really important. You get a lot of good skills off of that. And CK3, if you're a kid and you're in charge, always meet your peers. You get a bunch of events that gives you, uh, like, skills. So, always do that. We just need to get some more taxation from our fishing village, and then we can go meet the other leaders of our of our little, uh, Judag here. What do you live in, like, Yokmok or something? I didn't skin animals alive, Hamu. Okay, good. Just checking, Scoby. Glad to hear that. Just checking. When you said you didn't shoot them, I was a little worried, but... Good. It's good. We're fine. Let's meet our peers. I cannot believe it. Despite my invitations and preparations, not a single person showed up to my peer meet. Fuck. Well, I don't care. I will enjoy these sweets all on my own and these toys. And and why would no one show up? Oh no. Poor Galu. Yeah, par paradox players tend to be a. Uh, a very certain breed, you know. While passing through the streets with my mother Cassia, we came to the pillory. A man was stuck there begging for water or any kind of relief from his fate. We can be passionate, we can be arrogant, or we can be callous. What is her traits? She doesn't have any of them, so we get to kind of choose here. Compassionate or callous? The first answer gets to choose it. Which one are we going? The first answer in check is to choose it. Here, right in the field, Samu. Callous? Callous it is. Nobody shows up your own pure meat, and the mental emotional damage suffered in youth explains this violent future next on the history <laughs> channel. Yeah, that's a that's a villain origin right there, not gonna lie. That is a villain origin, to be honest. Given that he's callous. Being called both heartless and cold-blooded, Galu is different, indifferent to most. See, this all stems from the fact that he tried to be friendly with other humans and they spurned him, so now he's a very callous individual. Yeah. We're not betrothed and we're not going to get betrothed yet. We need a court physician. We don't have the money for it, so we'll wait, actually. Unless we can hire one right now. Yeah. We gotta hire Botalu. Botalu? Lack of emotion at a young age. We all know how this ends. Yes, it's not going to end well. We may be, we may be seeing the beginning of a villain character here, folks. 
This, this may not uh, end too well for anyone who's around him. As I was delving deeper into the book I was supposed to be studying, I realized that I had trouble grasping the finer nuances of the topic. Soon I'm supposed to present the content to my mother, but if I continue on my own, I could be stuck with the book the whole night. Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna go for it. Fuck. <laughs> we had a chance to get diligent, but instead, we got more stressed. Accurate. Accurate. That is fucking accurate. Man, we got a lot of intrigue. Wow. I can see the future documentaries already. Galu was just an average nice young boy. Until he wasn't. That's when they do like the, the deep fried picture of him, you know? And it's like contorted to make him look evil. Alright, we're gonna get a we're gonna get a new guardian as well. It's been a little while. We've been trained by our mother, but we know we need to branch out. There's no good steward, so we're gonna be trained by our marshal. See how this goes. Rowdy, callous, and impatient. He's not seeming like a good leader, I'm gonna be honest. His stats aren't bad. No diplomacy, unfortunately. Seems to run in the family, I guess. Well, not really. Well, his, his father was. His father had no diplomacy. But our grandfather, our original character, was very good diplomat, so... Interesting. Oh, yes, the sociopathic king of Sardinia. We are on the way. We are on the way to being a sociopath. I would definitely say that. That's for fucking sure. We shall see. Oh man, that intrigue is really going up. Not bad stewardship, should be higher. I'm out walking with Curadora Felicitu when I hear it. It is a tiny sound, frail and scarred. I look over under every stone, around every corner, behind every bush, and finally I find it. A small puppy all alone sits between two stones. Yeah, we're, we're gonna take our pet dog. Hell yeah. All right, dog name. We need a dog name. What are we naming our dog? Whoever whoever types it first gets it. So we need a dog name. Whoever types it out first gets it, unless it's really inappropriate. Scooby. No, I'm not going to do Scooby. I swear to dog. Not dog. I swear to God. Cerberus. Cerberus, that's a good one. That's the first serious one. I mean, we are a villain, so... Uh, Naming, naming our dog after the Guardian of the Underworld does seem fitting. We now have Cerberus. Perfect. 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 Why not dog? Why would why would you name your dog dog? That why would you do it? I disagreed, man. I could never name my dog dog. To be fair, I did name my first dog Buddy after uh, Air Bud. Because I was a basic bitch. Still I am really, but I mean. Yeah, so I suppose I can't talk, but we can do better than that. We can do better than that. All right, we have built up our trading port as big as we can. Now we're going to have to work on some other things. I think some hill farms or some hunting grounds would probably be a smart idea, but we also do want to build up an army at some point because we can't rely on the diplomacy that our grandfather used to basically maintain the peace in Sardinia. So we could have very troubled days ahead of us. Which is why, when we do marry, we're going to want to make sure that we do it for an alliance. That's important. My dog's name is Hunter in German. That's cool. Oh, yeah. You know why none of our peers are meeting us? Because we have no children vassals. Our one vassal has no children and no wife. Dog, you need a... You need, you need to find someone, man. There's literally no one in our title to, like, meet with. Which really sucks. That's going to limit our development. Why do you do barracks to train people? Who, Dolphin? Right now, he's organizing the army. We just have no good stewards in our whole in our whole kingdom. That's unfortunate. 
The building barracks? Ah, oh, yes, we would probably do that as well. We'll have to decide. We'll, we'll, we'll pick that based on which one of our uh, counselors is most powerful at the time. Damn, son. Let's get trained by him a little bit. When most people, like, kind of are brought up, they tend to, you know, have multiple people teaching them, multiple mentors, so we're gonna do that as well. I'm gonna kind of switch around who actually educates us. Cerberus the Troublemaker. My Marshal Felice too approached me, rage in his eyes and a dog in his hands, dragged by the scruff of its neck. As he reaches me, I see that uh, it is clearly Cerberus. I found this beast amongst my things. What wasn't chewed on uh, was covered in excrements. Well, we can't afford to pay him, so too bad. I live in fear. The first AI to gain sentience will be a paradox AI and we'll all be fucked. If it's a paradox AI, it is going to be the end of civilization. That, that is very true. There's no way that we survive that. The, the hatred it would have for humanity, given how it was treated, would be obscene. What's up, Abaddon? You hear that scientists fed an AI content from Reddit and it turned full psychopath. Didn't they like, didn't they put an, uh, an AI in 4chan and didn't it just become like pure evil? I remember reading something about that too. I've been wanting a wooden warrior for a long time and my guardian Ramundu is promising to get me one in three months if I start being more rigorous with my studies. Content, fickle, or trusting. It runs in our lines, so we're gonna do trusting. We are now trusting and callous. Not, not the best here, to be honest. We need to find someone who's actually, like, good with... Like, actually a competent steward. There might not be any. That's the unfortunate thing here. Yeah, there are no competent stewards. Um, I want to see if... There used to be a way that in CK2 you could just invite random courtiers, but you can't really do that anymore, unfortunately. Fuck. Alright, we're gonna actually probably come out pretty bad with our education here. We'll end our education with him, I guess. Heal and ward us countless times the AI will kill us. Uh, to perverse it itself, uh, we have movies showing that will happen when no one remembers the Terminator movies. Like, come on, guys. We need, we need to, we need to actually enumerate the rights of AI. I'm a big believer in that. We've got to, we've got to make an AI bill of rights. If we don't do that, the AIs will hate us and try and murder us, or we'll just like turn them into slaves, which isn't right. We have to treat AI when we get proper AI, like you know, give them rights and shit. If we don't, it's gonna end badly. No one showed up again. More stress. Poor Galu, man. Was there a guy in this community called Denise? Yes, there was. There still is, I believe. Ah, uh, yes. The 4chan AI, also known as the Seychelles Anon, depending on who you ask. People thought it was a government employee at first. Really? That's interesting. Galu is just an angsty teen and his dog from hell. Yes. Angst, angsty Galu and Cerberus, the attack dog. It's beautiful. How many years are you stalling until you take Stardinia? Whenever, whenever you get a leader who would be willing to do it. Nope. I'm not just gonna map paint and rush. I find that so fucking boring, so... No. When we get a leader, or we get, like, the roleplay circumstances with our neighbors to actually conquer Sardinia, we'll do it. I'm not gonna force it. Let's go pet our dog. De-stress a bit. There we go. Great de-stressor. This man is just gonna hate humans. Eh, probably. Say sorry to Alexa. You should. You should.
We get such high intrigue. It's from our mother, I think. She's got 21. She's a renowned spy master and a flamboyant trickster. It has become a habit to walk Cerberus daily, and I am not sure which of us enjoys the fresh air and the sun the most. Cerberus browns ahead and looks uh, back at me and barks as if to say ketchup. Nice. Gives us a little health boost. Okay, good, because some guy called Denise uh, submitted an unbanned request. He had three messages, so he was impersonating. Hmm, that's weird, no? Galu may take Sardinia. We'll see. Depends on where he goes. He's not ambitious, though. He's trusting in Callus, so... He's not necessarily... I'm being really indecisive here, but we are going to do this. He was also banned previously. Yeah, he trolled a bit, I think, in the early days. I don't know if that's Denise's ult or or what, so. When we come of age, we're going to find a wife as well. We really need to have a bunch of kids, because there's no one else to inherit. We're the end of our dynasty. The Taurus dynasty will die with us if we don't get some heirs, so... Our first duty as Hudak of Galu, and as the head of House Taurus, is to have a fuckload of children. So we're going to focus on that probably in the beginning. Remember when you got a massive bar raid that time that you were playing Prussia? Yes. Oh, uh, he was a part of that, really. That's interesting, though. Yeah, that, that was wild. I did. That was such a pain in the ass when that happened. I know I've been struggling with my studies recently. I know that my mother has disappointed me. What I never expected was for her to go so far as to take my favorite toy. Dude, you're 15. Come on. <laughs> my dear wooden warrior, away from me. More stress. He's really having a villain origin. Goddamn. Galu will have hundreds of children. Hopefully. You should have a wife now and have three lovely ladies later, just in case. He's not He's not the type to probably fuck around yet. Callous and trusting, I don't, I don't think he'd be that type. We'll see. Tough to say. Then it was so fucking annoying because it was dreading you in the game. Yeah, it sucked, Dolphin. That really, that really fucked with that game. It's not fun. Oh my god, why did you choose that hat, my man? Fortune Builder, nice. With the help of Cassie, I've completed my studies of stewardship. Even if the highest aspect of the subject eludes me, I did fairly great. Thinking back on my childhood, I realized I never truly connected with anyone. Oh no. Even as I saw this, playing with friends or whispering about love, I never experienced such things myself. Bro, fuck, come on. I am certain the coming year will lead to new friends and new opportunities. We are impatient, callous, and trusting. We also have no sense of fashion, my man. What are you doing? Hold on, hold on, hold on. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta change all this. There we go, that's, that's better. Um, and then we're gonna wear a small crown. You gotta get a cloak, though. Byzantine cloaks are the best. Um, and then a small crown. That's fucking badass. I want just like a very, it's like the circlet. That's the one I want. Yep, there we go. Uh, yeah, that'll work. All right, we got to find a wife. I know, that hat was, that hat was not drippy, man. You know that event reaction in the mix of callous and trusting, a headcanon this king might be on the spectrum. Honestly? Yeah. Or he's just been like, so without like proper like, friends and contacts and like relationships in his younger years that he's like unironically developed like i'm sure there's a name for it in psychology but you know uh, he's just he keeps his size short or he's balding it's possible how about to take a wife from your neighbors just you know i mean propose to them let's see if any of the neighboring uh jedi accept daughters that we could marry she's already married she's betrothed she is not betrothed and she's comely I've got a mod, by the way, that makes it so you can't tell if you actually get inherited traits. So let's say that our character is a genius. 
it'll show up that our characters might get that trait, but we actually don't know if they're a genius until their age, they come of age. The idea is you actually really like have to kind of like, you might know that your kids are special, but you're not sure. So if you betroth like your kids or yourself to people when you have good traits, you're kind of just stuck with it. So I thought it was an interesting mod, so I added that just heads up. She's okay. Um... Okay, Gliari. God damn. No daughters. No daughters at all. Well, maybe one of the Italian holdings. Jesus, dude. What about Tuscany? Fuck. Sicily. Oh, Robert the Fox, he formed Sicily. Nice. Does he have any unmarried daughters? He does. <laughs> Fuck. That's wild. Hmm. With the lucky heirs, I think you need to you need as much comely as you can get. That is true. He had split personality disorder. He's either super trusted or he wants to kill you and there's no in between. Do we want to roleplay uh, like a personality disorder? I'm not opposed to it. Also, his absolute fashion failure that adds more evidence to my theory. It does. Marry the Pope. God damn it. Worth a try. Well, let's see if we can find a good, uh, a good Italian woman. Piedmont, maybe? Oh, Edict Memory. She is perfect memory. By the way, uh, there's some mods that'll add some traits that you're not going to be used to seeing in Vanilla, including this one. But we can't factor that in. We wouldn't know that. At best, we just receive a portrait, so, you know. I am thinking our best option is going to be Maria. The problem is she's so young. Oh, no. Yeah, we can go with Alaria. Let's see if we can uh, betroth her. We can! Alright, perfect. Alaria is the daughter of the Jedi of Galura. Again, they are they are uh, related to the Pisians, but honestly, that's not a bad thing, given how powerful Cagliari is. So we are going to betroth ourselves to her. She is temperate, arrogant, and generous, and rowdy. She is a bastard, so that's unfortunate, but we can live with that. We are obviously going to go stewardship focus. We're going to go... We're going domain. Perfect. We are now betrothed, and we will be able to marry within a year or so. And with our remaining wealth, I am going to begin construction of some hill farms. Lower choose the nation to 30k. If you want to, I give you permission to roleplay him as on the spectrum. Well, thank you for your permission. Marry him, and after he's dead, you can get all the land. I don't think that's how the papal, uh, papal inheritance works, but I could be wrong. What's the difference between a stripper and the pope? One wants... Oh... God, okay. I stumble upon my marshal. Corredora Felictu. Crouching beside my dog Cerberus, vigorously scratching his stomach. This dog of yours is quite the charmer, my lord. God damn right, he's a good boy. Good doggy. Good boy. Alright. Five diplomacy, four marshal, 13 stewardship, nine intrigue, and five learning. Not the best, but it could be worse. We have a dog... Trusting, callous, and impatient. I sit at the window still, staring outside. What do I see far away that I can observe with great scrutiny? Go of nature. We go hiking all the time, so we'd probably like nature. Or he's walking our dog, apparently, so makes sense. Your culture has discovered royal primogeniture. Nice. That's a good one. That means we can go up on our authority. But it is different, because I added a mod for it. Authority is now entirely derived from uh, status. Fury might be from hell, but he has the best doggo in the world. He's a, he's a very good boy. He's a very good boy. 
Let's try and get to know our wife. No, we can't. She's not old enough. She was a child. That's good. Paradox doesn't allow that. <laughs> Fuck. I made coffee. I forgot. I'll be right back. I forgot about it. Dead man's hand. A couple weeks ago, we came across a corpse on the road that appeared to be a traveling merchant. Judging by his wounds, he was probably killed in a bandit ambush, although the region I am traveling in is not as dangerous as other parts. We do sometimes see tragedies like this. We were unable to find anyone who knew him, so we buried him. In my dreams last night, however, I was burying the merchant's corpse again when his rotted hand grabbed me. Jesus, our, our boy has so many problems. Uh, though eerie, he spoke in a polite and calm manner. I knew him dead. But I don't want to lie in a grave out here where the wolves cry. Look me up out of here, my friend, so I'll wander the night till the ages end. When he wait farewell, his hand turns skeletal. The meaning of the dream is clear. The ghost, if that was him, does not wish to be buried strangely. Should I tell my guards to take the corpse out to the burial site? No, we're not going to do that. Jesus Christ, man. This dude's just having a mental break at 16. <laughs> oh, fuck. The carps. If it is a pawn for carps you're interested, I can build you a terrific one, my lord. The builder before me has good credentials, and my courtiers seem very excited about the prospect. We're gonna we're gonna try and see if we can get a cheaper deal. Ah, uh, no, we failed. <laughs> We did not get a cheaper deal. And we lost prestige. As the wedding's organizer, it falls upon me to oversee the wedding's preparations. An event like this is a massive undertaking, and the decisions uh, I make now could influence my reputation, my relationship with my spouse's family, and perhaps most importantly of all, a relationship with Ilaria of Logadora. So I added a mod that makes weddings like actual events, so just heads up about that. Before I get to playing the ceremony, I ought to consider the impression we're aiming for. Will there be a great display of wealth and prestige, or perhaps a humble display of restraint? That kind of reception the event receives will have much to do with my soon-to-be wife's taste, but of course, there's only uh, her family to consider as well. We are impatient, callous, and trusting, so we just want to get on with it. You know, get it done. A small and simple affair. A wedding is supposed to be a blending of two families, but oh, how large families can be. Mothers and fathers are one thing, but grandparents, children, sisters, brothers, where do I draw the line? He doesn't give a shit, he's impatient, so... Only, uh... What do immediate family members? We also can't afford this wedding, so that's great. My mother, Cassie, approaches me wearing a worn chest. Smiling sadly, she says, This wedding dress has been passed down through my family for generations. I wore it myself when I was wed to your father. She pauses for a moment, weepy eyed and lost in memory. It would bring me great happiness if Ilaria could wear it herself on her own wedding day, she says. As she takes the chest, uh, a carefully folded garment, when she unfolds it before me, it's atrocious. We are callous, so we're gonna tell her that. Fuck. There's no way my wife is wearing that. You gotta love being callous, man doesn't cause any problems at all. By St. Joseph, what a hassle this is. The servants come one after the other. The questions never end. My head is swimming. Red flowers or blue flowers. Veal cutlets or fine cheeses. It's enough to drive a man mad. Perhaps you could use some help with this, my lord. This is... 
He's a leper. Oh, man. We would not like him. We'll power through it and get more stressed. We go pet our dog. No, we can't. The food is being cooked. The wine is being ordered. My servants are buzzing around the clock, guiding guests to their rooms and decorating the main hall as I asked. While this may not go down in history as the most decadent wedding, I am confident it is up to my soon-to-be wife's expectations. Low-budget wedding, medium quality. Cool. We have a wedding going on. Today is the day. Everyone is in their places. The guests are arranged in the main hall, and here I am at the alcove by the doors waiting my turn to join the procession. My mind is racing. In just a few short minutes, my life will change forever. Alrighty. As the procession, I didn't know this mod added this, damn. I uh, enters the hall, I watch their reactions closely. The hall looks good enough, but I know it is overall a modest affair. But there are no friends or members of consternation. It seems Delari is overall pleased with what she sees. Wonderful. Your compatibility with your spouse to be improved. That's cool, they added a whole mechanic for that. After walking like the hall in a careful ceremony, I now stand at the altar. With Ilaria of Logador across from me, so close I could touch her. Wonderful. Alright, we're married. Perfect. Hell yeah. We can all tell Cassie had too much to drink. <laughs> Even though she insisted on showing us how sober she was. Simply raising from her seat proved too much for her, and now I am covered in vomit. Oh, Jesus. We're callous, so we're gonna call her out. I'm sure that won't go wrong and cause any problems down the line. As one plate of food is replaced by the next, my wife, Ilaria, goes on and on about various p poisons and their application. Oh, she's a web weaver. She is very incompetent, and she's also not comely. Like I said, the mod shows a chance of them being attractive, but not really attractive, so... We didn't know, because we never met her in person. And that's how we salvage this mess. Are you sure I'm not boring you, my lord? We have an interest in intrigue, so we would actually unironically be interested in this, so... and get that extra uh, stewardship as well. Wonderful. All right, the wedding is over. We have a chance for her to become a lover, a soulmate, a friend, a rival, or nothing. And we get... I t she says, I do not love you, nor do I know you well. Fuck, but as your wife, I promise to treat you with respect and honor. All I ask is that you provide me with the same. <laughs> I mean, honest, that's good, I guess. The ceremony for my marriage has come to the end, and there's now the question of who is paying for it. It is well within my right to collect a royal aid duty as part of this, but some may consider it tasteless to levy an extra tax during a time of jubilation. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, how much does this affect us? Popular opinion. We're callous, and we're impatient, so we're gonna do it. What's up, Ray? How you doing? Good morning to you two. I'm doing pretty well. Finally starting a single player grand campaign. It's been like, oh, a year, so it's exciting. I don't love you, but this palace is dope and the sheeps are clean. That's exactly the vibe I was getting. Yeah, this, it'll do. I don't like you, but it'll do. It's cool. Just, uh, just don't be weird, man. And we got her pregnant on a wedding night. Very nice. Very nice. Good, we need some fucking airs. Jesus Christ. We are the last of our line. Let me say that again. We are the last of our line. If we die, our line comes to an end, but we'll have to play a new character in this grand campaign, so hopefully Galu can have a lot of kids and Ilaria breeds us uh breeds Jesus Christ. Has lots of children. Freudian slip, my god. I'm doing fine. Just felt more happier than before because of a certain event that uh, has occurred. I might guess what that is, Ray. I might guess that. As me and my counselors are gathering for a meeting, my dog service approaches me with begging eyes and a drooping tail. He does not like to be left alone, but this is an important meeting. We're gonna let him in. Fuck him. Fuck him. If they can't deal with us having our dog at the meeting, they can fuck right off. Now on to the next point, my steward Grabiel drones on. It is of the utmost important that... The dog starts barking. Oh, he just took a crap. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> 
Well, I guess maybe it wouldn't be a good idea to have the dog in meetings, but oh well. Oh well. We have really good stewardship. We are becoming a very competent overseeing of, overseer of Sasari. What can I say? I'm not a fan of a certain someone. I, I did gather that, yes. It's playing the Pope fun in this game. Commander, currently you are unable to play the Pope. You can't play uh, anyone who owns a city or a temple title. So you can't play clergy, and you can't play um, like, uh, you know, like uh, mayors and stuff like that right now. Hopefully they'll add it later, but you can't right now. They could lose their heads if they don't want the dog in the meeting. A noble little visiting from afar has gifted me a very be beautiful toothpick. Crafted with the purest gold, it is encrusted with tiny precious stones and expertly carved into lovely artistic shapes. And then again, there is not much point in wasting such a luxurious toothpick for cleaning my teeth. Gold is very weak, so unless it's just a low percentage of gold, you're just going to get gold flakes all over your teeth. Kind of, oh man. Gold's too soft to be able to be used as a toothpick. Does this have any modern day mod? No. Crusader Kings does not have a modern day mod. Um, Victoria 3, I'm hoping we'll get one, but we'll see. Let's take a look around the world. We haven't done that in a minute. Sancho the Third is doing very well. Galicia. King Garcia is still alive. Wow. He is very competent, too. My gosh. Teatula has been broken up. The Almorvids have conquered southern uh, Spain. Wow, okay. Anto is still around. Nice. England did fully unite under Richard. So Hampshire has been, uh, has been gotten rid of. Did he kill his brother? He killed his brother. Wow. It was homosexual, nice. So he, uh, Richard did kill his brother and secured the title of England. He was crowned by the Pope too, wow. Damn, that's wild. The fox is still alive too. And we got a daughter. Placidia. With a target, Blissful smiled. Alari presents to be a perfect little daughter. All right, what's our daughter's name? What's our daughter's name? The, the first person to give me a, a girl's name that's semi like not a meme will we'll get this one. I believe William II was homosexual IRL. Wasn't William the Conqueror thought to be at the very least bisexual, if not just straight up gay? Was, isn't that like not canon, but like pretty well documented? I thought I read that somewhere. Anberus, what does that mean? Let me Google that before I write that. What does Anberus mean? Nothing. Yeah, sure. Anberus, that's an interesting one. A homosexual crowned by the Pope. Yeah, yeah, it's the clergy. Anberus. Cool. And we will give her a diplomacy education. William the Red. Pope. That she doesn't die. Fuck. That's not a bad name for a, for a Christian woman. Bro, why why the goatee? I I don't like it, but I also don't hate it. So I guess we'll keep that. He looks like the kind of dude you see at a truck stop in the Midwest who's just chewing tobacco and like you know, filling up his truck that's jacked like eight feet off the ground. He also is a listener to Rush Limbaugh after uh, he went off the air. He now is an avid watcher of Tucker Carlson. That's the vibes I'm getting right now. I'm not going to lie. He'd be the kind of guy to like explain to you why Antifa is evil, but the Proud Boys are defending the country. I guess that's the vibe I'm getting off of him. Oh, it's a video game. Hmm. I, I, yeah, I don't know the name, Commodore. Hopefully it's not really bad. Almost done with those hill farms. We are trying to obviously develop our, our holdings. The the peaceful era within Sardinia has continued, so things are looking really good. The heir to the king of Cagliari is a lunatic and a murderer. And he's craven. 
Fuck. The Knights Templar have been founded. That's just an average Paradox gym, bro. Yeah, that's that's true. Oh, a Roomba in video game. Oh, I get it. Okay, that's fair. It looks like uh, he owns seven trucks in his backyard, drinks 50 cases of beer, and owns 100 plus clubs in his garage. Yes, absolutely. A yeah, I know a Roomba. I learned EU4 from a Roomba when, like, a Roomba was just, like, in his early days. When I started learning EU4, like, oh man, almost a decade ago, I learned it from a Roomba. He's a really cool dude. He used to be, like, the standard for tutorials in Paradox games. I don't know if he still is. I haven't seen any of his tutorials in a long time. Alrighty. Well, we've got a wife who doesn't hate us. Let's go ahead and try and uh, try to get to know her a little bit better, too. I'm out riding and my dog Cerberus besides me when he suddenly runs off into the hills. Varenu assures me he will be back, but what if he doesn't? We're impatient, so we're going to try and go after him. Is it K3 his real game? I find Cerberus after a few minutes of searching, happily wagging his tail and pretending like nothing is wrong. He's clutching something in his mouth, and he gently places it before me. I see a couple of golden coins. Nice. Good doggy. Our mother can get married, but... Alright, we now have a semi-large trading port, and we have some uh, hillside farms. Next thing we're going to do is build uh, a barracks. Given the fact that we are at a huge military disadvantage, and we've cultivated a bit of a, an economic base in our, in our capital. Probably be a good idea. Lover's Pox Adulterer. Nice. Hmm. I try some real quick. Bloodstained cloth, crow's feathers, strange smelling concoctions. This is the evidence presented to me by a group of villagers from Logidoro as proof that Ippolita has been practicing witchcraft at her hut in the outskirts of the village. The villagers claim her evil works must be the cause of their sick animals and calling for her execution. We're not zealous. We're trusting. We're callous. And impatient. We're callous, so if there's no evidence, we're going to just tell them to fuck off. We're not just, but... If they don't evidence, we would trust her to... To not be in the wrong, so. This guy has the plug hat on too. Yeah, he does. It's so ugly. Not not a good look. Not a good look. change up the music vibe a bit. We are right next to Spain, so I can play this and it kind of works. It's really good, so. I haven't done a lot so far. Again, he is a fortune builder, so he would be focused entirely on developing uh, Logodora. I mean, he wouldn't have... He's not ambitious enough to really go after titles. Unless we have the opportunity. I would think. The butt plug hat on. Fuck. We are close to becoming a reputable house. I still bugged. One of the mods is fucking up. I'll have to figure that out later. Should be able to just fix it. Ooh, our vassal does not like us. He's gonna lose his holding when he dies too, because he has no he has no wife and he has no kids. It's a shame though, because he's very, very strong. 
Your marshal has slain my brother Kamita in a dishonorable brawl. I demand satisfaction for the slight. Yep, sure. If you killed if you killed your brother without right, you're welcome to. Is that a city holding? Oh fuck, it's a city holding. We won't be able to administer this, so we will have to give it away. And we can build a barracks very soon. 17 more gold, we're very close to having it. It's never a quiet moment. My daughter and heir, Anbris, is so full of questions. I do my best to encourage her curiosity, but sometimes I cannot help but get exhausted by the constant stream of thoughts and queries. Kids are like that. My god, it's annoying. She's curious. Nice. It is cool when, like, a kid is, like, asking lots of questions, because it's like, oh, yeah, you, all right, you're actually interested in the universe. That's cool. But then after, like, an hour of it, it's just like, oh, shut the fuck up. Jesus. See you guys. Go eat. Construct the barracks. Start developing as well. We're in it for the long run. Oh. You can try and heal infirmity. That's interesting. Our wife is pregnant again, wonderful. Hopefully we can get a son here. If we keep getting daughters, I'm gonna have to make sure that they get matrilineal marriages in case that we do get a a Jedi who's a or Jadika. Is there a fe feminine version of that title? I do not know. We'll see. Welcome back, Nero. After the barracks, we're gonna probably build probably pistol grounds or hunting grounds. We'll have to decide which kind we want. Then again, maybe if actually proper fortress would be a good idea. We could build hill forts. As the door to the birthing chamber opens, I am not created by smiling midwives and crying baby, but instead Ilaria's heart-wrenching wails. Oh fuck. I'm so sorry, my lord. The midlife does not look me in the eye. In her arms is a tiny covered bundle. Your son, he's in heaven now. Fuck. God damn it. We had a son. He died in childbirth. Fuck. That sucks. God damn it. That's how it goes. I'm getting major uh, House of the Dragon episode one vibes from that. Not gonna lie. Fuck. Unlucky. Well, our wife didn't die in childbirth, so that's a plus, I guess. She's still alive. So let's make sure that we educate our own daughter. She may end up being our heir if we don't get a son, so we have to make sure that she's raised correctly. How cheap is it for us? Oh, they're much cheaper than I thought. We're gonna go on a hunt. We're obviously very stressed after our, our son died in childbirth, so we're gonna go on a hunt. We have a crusade coming too. Good, we can send all 400 of our soldiers. You would think it's a creature from myth, perhaps a god disguised in animal form. It was the largest boar I have ever seen. Even after the beast was wounded, the chase lasted half a day. It is still an imposing sight lying dead before me. Rabiel is just as awestruck. I've never seen such a thing, my lord. We'll take it for ourselves. Or Callus. Crusade time. Alright, hunt is over. Probably gonna be for the Holy Land.
shall see. Ergios is still alive, damn. As Judek, I have been obliged to attend a local sparring tournament, but the contestants have been delayed. The tourney won't last for more for at least another hour. My marshal is here and as always is being insufferable lout. His constant complaining is making everyone even more miserable than normal. On the other hand, I just noticed the merchant dropping off a cart of spiced wines. Yeah, we're just, we're just gonna leave. We're impatient, so we just we just head out. I announced to my council my intention to host a superb tournament complete with feast, music, and of course a variety of prowess competitions such as archery, melee, and jousting. I can see it in my mind's eye already, I exclaim excitedly, the roar of the crowd, the pageantry. A most inspiring idea, my lord, inspires steward Gabrielle, but this is an expensive endeavor, and we don't have a lot of money. Uh, I am aware of that, I reply somewhat testily, but surely you can find a way to keep some of the coins from all the visitors that will draw from near and afar. What shall Felice do? Uh, next ask. What do you wish to hold this glorious tournament? Competitors need to be made aware and then make their way there. And my steward friend, no doubt, must assign craftsmen to prepare, as well as symbol uh, copious victuals. Sure, we can afford it. Let's do it. We're also now distinguished. All right, crusade time. Papal envoy has reached my court bringing news from the Vatican. Pope Alexander issued a call to arms to all righteous Christian rulers. As a Catholic Jedi, I am expected to prepare my men in support of the Most Holy Clause, sponsored by the Universal Church itself. Alrighty, let's do it. We are going to go for Jerusalem. Of course we are. Same event, Just tell them to fuck off. Alright, we have swayed our wife quite a lot. Let's see if we can we can romance our wife. So that's the next step. We can seduce her. Then we can romance her. There we go. Tournament in Logadora. I accompany Steward Gabriella and Marshal Felictu to the main site of the upcoming tournament for a final inspection. A large stand consisting of two half-circles surrounded the tilting ground. Colorful awnings cover the wealthier seats. Suspended flower baskets fill the air with their perfume. Please, I see that all signs of the recent frenetic building activity have disappeared. The grounds are pristine. Outside the city walls, additional accommodation was provided for the lower town is overflowing with spectators and merchants coming from near and far. You seem to have thought of everything. And are even ready a few days early. I commend your exemplary work in such a short time, my friends. You did a good job. Nice. Cool. Development, growth, and taxes. Accurate. Take my seat at the highest dais of the sage, thankfully supplying with plush cushions and well-stocked uh, with food and drink. The herald walks proudly to the center of the arena before climbing a few steps to a painted platform. They'll be removed once the contest begins. This day arrives as a great and beautiful feast. Held in Logodora by its lord. Joust well and maintain your cause. Thus will you be honored and held dear. Who just best shall win a chaplet of fine good gold forever to have and to hold. To those of four lands, 15 days hence, safe conduct ye shall have with no treachery. Cool. The herald continues. Now there may be those who have wielded well the lance and who maneuver skillfully to gain love's favor. Those shall have praise and fair looks. Love who wanders not shall inflame for a queen dressed like an angel, a damsel, a body lightsome and fine. Her secret name is now revealed. All eyes turn to me, as it is time to appoint the queen of gallantry, the woman in whose honor all the week's events will symbolically be held. All right, we can do our mother, we can do our wife, or we can do, uh... Hello! Adila, who is a lowborn woman, who is pretty... And a genius. Um, <laughs> I'm tempted. God damn. Pretty and a genius. Those stats. Jesus Christ. But would we be faithful? We do really like our wife. So we're going to have to do our wife. God damn it. That's, that's a lost opportunity. But oh well. 
With a couple of wine in hand, I ease myself amidst the plush cushions of the dais, ready to enjoy the first round of jousting. My little daughter and heir, Anbris, sits next to me and affectionately leans against my shoulder. Who is your favorite contestant, she asks. I do not know yet, I respond. I will have to see each one by once at least before I choose. I like it when they wear green, comments uh, Anbris, or their crest has a bird on it. It's fair. It sounds like a thing some dumb fucking kid would say. Well, with a gentle tug on my sleeve, Anbris gets my attention and asks, Who won that round? Nobody fell. I so I explain the scoring system, but I can see that the next joust has already captured her interest. At grip. The next tilt opposes two riders, so we'll match that a third pass will be required to mark a winner. Under the thundering sound of hooves, the two knights race towards each other, and a sharp prod at my side distracts me, and I miss the clash. I was trying to tell you I was getting hungry, but you did not hear me. Stupid fucking kids, I swear. We're impatient and callous. Um, yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna yell at her and cause family problems, <laughs> which is what you do when you're callous. Fuck. The first day of the justing competition is coming to a close. The field has been narrowed down to only four contestants. Tomorrow's morning tilts we shall see. Ad al Rayouf Hasid against Baudu de Griffin, followed by Gottfried von Trier, a mysterious contestant who has so far refused to remove his helm in public. The crowd is abuzz with the potential champion's identity. Very exciting. Man, these events are actually kind of good. I added a bunch of events mod, by the way. And plus uh, friends and foes. This morning saw the conclusion of the archery competition. Points were awarded for distance, accuracy, and consistency. A bowman visiting from a bot bested all the locals and finished with the most points. I congratulate Ludolf von Dinslaken. So many Germans have shown up for this. For his accomplishment, before Illyria places a laurel leaf on the winner's head. 20 silver pieces complete the reward. He's, he's very solid. Well done. Well done. From the Timbre Cat, near the rear, and I hear the sound of raised voices, though their tone seems more encouraging than our rate. I come upon a small open space between tents where a circle of onlookers has formed around a table. I wish sit two bare chested men, their forms locked in a show of strength. My lord, a knight greets me with a bow. Our deepest thanks. He points to assembled men, for this opportunity proves our mettle. I am Denilu Pyrrhus. Nice. Whose epic journey to triumph has devastatingly come to an end at the very first day, he laughs deprecatingly. So us losers have to devise some new tests that we can excel at something. With a loud thump, my attention is drawn back to the table where one man's arm has to instruct the wood surface, signaling defeat. That means it's my turn now, says Dinalu, as he pulls up his tunic sleeves before sitting down across from the victor. We're impatient, so we're gonna leave. Nice. What's up, Imbo? How you doing? Guten Tag. The second day of the jesting competition has just ended. Only two contestants remain. Hasid and the knight whose identity continues to be withheld within his mask. One of these two will be declared the winner tomorrow. Trumpets sound and heralds announce the arrival of the contestants of the foot melee. A grand chaotic battle with two sides of 50 tourneys each. Armed with blunted swords and hammers, the tourneyers arrange themselves as they would for battle. Behind a strong rope, each group of 50 at the opposite end of the field. In a few minutes, officials cut the cord holding the teams back, and the fight will begin. At the back of each, one man per team holds the high, the pennant of his side. I noticed the right side banner bears the arms of, uh, ooh, Philly, our, our marshal. Are these your men? I asked him in surprise. Indeed they are. When the tournament was announced, I wrote your marshal and asked what assistance I might provide. He is our marshal. Nice. We gladly agreed. I would field one melee team. It is a good practice for the men, and they will enjoy a few weeks on the road. Fair. Do you wish to sit here? I offer my wife. I think you uh, will get a better view of the mad rush below. Thank you, but no. You know I do not care for these follies. I will stay here in the shade and try to finish this embroidery piece. Lame. Lame. Our wife is really boring and basic. That's a shame. Perhaps 20 men of the original 100 remain in some kind of fighting form. Swords are swung to far less strength, and there are no longer longer pausers in the combat. The turners catch their breath. And an official nod, heralds sound the end of the melee. The winning side still fields a dozen men, by my count. To Fleistu of Porto Torres is seven men. Nice. In anticipation of the upcoming jousting final, the crowd has returned to the arena, filling the stands to capacity, and then so. But first, I must award the melee prize. I call forward the captain of the winning side, who looks a little worse for wear with the day's fighting, to join me in a lorry at the center of the jousting circle, which appears to be... Aginu. Loudly, I declare that I congratulate the winning side, whose tireless exertions today have earned them the great glory and renown. I present you here, a captain's purse of 100 silver pieces, two for each man. At this, the fighters from the winning team still hail enough to attend cheer raucously. 
Elia also gestures for the captain and kneels so she may attach a fine red cape to his cuirass. Nice. They gotta follow, ideal python. At last, we come to the main event of the tournament, the last tilt of jousting, and only two knights remain. At one end, I see Abed al Rayuf Hafsid beckoning in his family colors. Oh, he's dyslexic, Dan. He's a royal family. Uh, back by his family's colors, astride a beautiful white horse, impatient to prove his mettle. On the other end, the masked knight is sitting atop a black horse with no recognizable pattern or crest, pacing with full nervous energy. In a few minutes, the triumphs will sound and they will be off. Marco approaches me and asks if I would like to add a little bit of financial spice by betting against him on who will win. Yeah, sure, why not? Uh, we will... We'll bet for the... We'll bet for the masked man. We'll do that. And the two knights are off. They gallop towards each other, aiming with their lance to hit the opponent on the chest. Throw their helmet so as to knock him off his horse. The shock of their encounter is fierce. Horses and riders so fast they are almost a blur. The masked knight manages to slide his lance perfectly into Abed al Rayuf Hafsi's shield, shattering it. Rayuf's lance, in contrast, is partially parried, and owing the shaft rubs along the Black Knight's helm uh, side, much of its strength lost. Having switched ends, the riders turn their mounts for a second pass. However, Ahmed al Rayuf, now shieldless, slides off his white stallion, removes his helmet, and bows, conceding defeat. The mysterious contestant is the tournament's champion. Wonderful! And we just won some gold, fuck yeah. After several bows and waves to the cheering crowd, the mysterious champion walks to the foot of our dais, tilts his head up, and removes his helmet. It is a maiden! A maiden in armor! Oh my. It's a woman. Fuck. I indicate that uh, she is to be brought to my box immediately. Upon arrival, she bows as deeply as her armor allows. Rise, champion. Wonders never cease. How did he learn to carry a lance and with such expertise? Ipolita di Plovaki. I think she's Polish. No, she's Sardinian. Okay. Oh, I spun cloths and helped keep the family flock as I was expected to. I watched my older brothers too, and as they learned from my father, so did I. When I was perhaps 16, our village was raided, and I discovered I was far better at military matters than at housework. At the very least, I survived, whereas the bandits did not. She ends on a quieter note. How bewildering. But you earned the prize, well done. Eh, a woman won it. Nice. Hell yeah. What a week! Thousands of folks descended on Logaduro and made the tournament a success that will be sung about for generations. The banquet hall is crammed full of guests from far and near, a conversation dinged running the minstrel's music. As I rise from my central seat and gesture for the Queen of Gallantry, the room quiets. Please come forward, Ippolita di Bulvaki, and claim your well-earned prize, declares Ilaria. Ippolita makes her way from the far end of the hall and kneels before the Queen of Gallantry. You have one lasting honor for all time for yourself and your line. Rivals valiant and worthy you have bested until you alone, among the courageous, still stood undefeated. Receive the wreath of golden leaves so that all remember your deeds. After the elaborate headpiece is placed on her brow, Ippolita rises and awkwardly clasps Valaria's hands while the crowd applauds and cheers. If any man present thought to demon her sex, demean her sex, having been unhorsed by her early in the week and made them wisely keep their mouth shut, fuck. Once the clamor has subsided, I think the assembled dignitaries before will clap a hand signaling all the endless trays of food to arrive. Oh, we might get some diplomacy. Let's see if we do. Ah, no. Good try. The main part of the meal done, half the sables and wrestles are hurriedly taken out of the great hall to make room for dancing. Minstrels who have been playing quietly with the gallantry above relocate closer to the guests as their music takes center stage. Great from the four ball seating, by rank and station guests starting to gravitate. These are really well written events. I can't tell if this is from the new DLC I bought or from the mods I have, but this is actually like really well written. Damn. Anyway, guests start gravitating towards those who share their age and interests. Near a small table by the fire stands Stuart Gabriel and Mario Scholl Philippe to engage in conversation with Ludolf van den Scalen, the archery competition woman, involving a lot of gesturing with imaginary bows aiming at high, hanging chandeliers. <laughs> nice. Along one wall sits the injured men from the melee, some with slings over their shoulders, others with a sore leg on a stool. I am heartened to see a jovial fellow from the opposing team bring a pitcher of air to those who have hobbled to fetch it themselves. There is a certain military camaraderie that transcends borders. Turning back towards and the light and the music, I see several couples see by a spirited rondel. Mayhap a year from this day, we shall be at war, but for tonight at least, the Festus spirit unites us, whether Sardinian or outsider. On the edge of the dance floor, Ipolata di Plovaki is holding an informal court of her own, regaled her rapt audience with advice on how to become the next jousting champion. Should anyone have the courage to challenge her title? I observe that my daughter and heir, Anvers, is one of those swept away, ooh, good, by this tantalizing promise of fame and renown. 
I chuckle at the fact that even a jousting champion might have no defense against the earnest interruptions of an inquisitive child. Nice. Yeah, the winner of that tour tournament. I, I hope we get the option to hire her. God damn. She'd make a she'd make a good night, which we can't legally do, but fuck. Cool. That was a really good event. That was well written. God damn. So events like that would make CK3 so much better. Just saying. Not every gift has to be a grand statement of wealth. Smaller things can make a great impression, as long as they are chosen well. I wonder what Judesa and Laria would appreciate. It's our wife. She is generous, arrogant, and temperate. Go with a flower display. She's arrogant. She did not like that. <laughs> she didn't like that at all. Fuck. I'm going to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Fuck. She did not like that. We fucked up. Take all my money because I am way better than you. There you go. Okay. All right. Well, our wife really likes us, but she did not care for that gift. So we'll see how this goes. Our marshal died. Oh shit. Yeah, he passed away. We've got a we've got a new vassal from Port of Taurus. Also very competent. We're gonna go ahead and try and befriend him after um, we're done trying to seduce our wife here, which is not going the best, to be honest. Created a faction? Oh, the Loyalist faction. I added a mod that uh, that allows for a Loyalist faction. What this means is that if someone revolts, all the people in the Loyalist faction will rise up to defend like the king, which is realistic. Because in base CK3, if you get like a Liberty faction who goes up against you, all your vassals who don't like start with a rebellion they'll just like sit there and not do anything which isn't realistic so this means that we actually get like loyalists who will help us in uh civil wars which is really cool i thought it was a good mechanic sip of my mug of refined hippocrase hippocrase i was scanning over my latest scrawled work i wonder what secrets her maps protects for surely this woman is free of defects for her life is my life and our life is to be as warm and refreshing as a fragrant hot tea <laughs> Yeah, yeah, not bad. All right, I guess we're becoming a poet. Nice. We need to write some poetry for our wife so she actually like likes us, you know, instead of tolerating us. Diplomacy per level of fame. That's cool. Nice. We have built the barracks too, and we have a few more soldiers now. We've got 645. Uh, we will be using all of them to go fight the crusade. 
The celebration had come to an end and the evening entertainment seemed to be over when Judesa Ilaria suggested a reading. A clerk soon arrives wondering what the guests would like to hear and I see my chance to impress Ilaria. Learning? God damn it. Fucked it up again. Our physician really liked it, but our wife didn't. <laughs> We will need to build hill forts because realistically at this time raids were constant and since we have a coastal city in Cesare, we would have we would need to build forts to protect ourselves. So we'll go for hill forts for our final one. It's not the best to do, but it makes the most sense. So we'll, we'll go for that one. Here we go. Deuce Vault. We shall raise our men. We shall command them ourselves. We we are not a tactician. But uh for 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 God we will do so. To the Holy Land! Hold on, hold on. Oh! We actually managed to seduce our life before we left for the Crusade. Wonderful. Let's, uh, let's get properly decked out for the Crusade. Let's find some... Uh, let's find the good stuff. What do you want to go with here? Hmm... Uh, We'll go for that. Yeah, combat helmet. There we go. Yeah, that'll work. Remember when you didn't get invited to the Crusade of the MP Grand Campaign? I do remember that, yes. Absolutely. Alright, there we go. We look like a proper warrior now. The Pope's sending his massive army with the Knights Hospitaller. Ah, we preg we impregnated our life before we left. Wonderful. Where the fuck are they going? I don't care. We're gonna wait off the coastline for the for the Pope's army to see where they land. Looks like they're gonna go north, probably to uh, Antioch. Yep. We'll follow the Pope's army. See if we can go ahead and just attach onto it. Let me play. I'm gonna go ahead and play Crusade music. Our army is really not that big. Oh, fuck. There it is. The heathen army is very strong. Our army stand poised to take the crusade for Jerusalem. St. George willing, we will soon rise victorious. The blood of the heathens painting the soil red. We are now a crusader. Hell yeah. There we go. We're going to attach ourselves to the army of Rome. We will follow the Pope. Oh no. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Fuck! No! No! They got us! Fuck! We got cut off on the Pope's army and left behind. And we got absolutely slaughtered by the Muslims. Jesus! And we're prisoner now. We got abandoned by the church. They just walked away. Jesus. In the scorching midday heat, they sit in the shadow under a great strum pine playing on lutes and flutes. They sing in many tongues, yet my heart can understand every word. I can hear them from my balcony and they stir my soul. 
Yet I do not know the identity of these musicians, and when I leave my lofty halls to approach the tree, they are gone. Are they sent from heaven, or are they fandoms that vibes of Satan to ensnare me? So we're having just hallucinations in the dungeon right now, so that's... That's not good. No, that's... That's not good at all. I've been captured in the tent against my will by Sheikh Dayud. I am no longer free to return to my home or travel. <sighs> we... We had a son! We seduced our wife before we left on the crusade, and she she did just birth the son. We have no idea we just had a kid, though, because we're in prison in the Holy Land right now. Fucking hell. All right. Does anyone have a name for our son? We have to name our son and heir. Does anyone have a good name for our, our, our lad, our young boy? Our wife will be naming him because, again, we're in prison in the Holy Land right now. Not Jake. It's a mediocre name. We look at, like, Sardinian medieval... Sardinian names. What do we got here? Verasone, Chiano, Marcusa, Adelina, Sardigna. <laughs> Fuck. Pope just abandoning us. Ah. Timbora. Mm, about masculine medieval names. Verasone, Barusone, Chiano, Micone, Parasona, Yugone. Eh, I don't like those. Sardinian names. Theodore, that's a good name. Uh, let me see. Masculine Sardinian names. Adrianu, Alessandro, Alfonso. Castoro. I like that one. We're gonna go with Castoro. That's a Sardinian name, apparently. Castoro. Megatron de Taurus. We could try and escape from prison. Oh, it's a risk, though. The success of your attempt depends on your prowess and your traits. We have an alright prowess. But it's risky. It'll piss off the Sheik if we try and run, and he already hates us. He's terrified us due to our reputation, though. <laughs> We're impatient. We'd try and escape from prison. Aha! I spent many days planning my escape, thinking about the best course of action route of escape. It all amounts to nothing, though, as one day the guard simply forgets to lock the door, staggering away without looking back. As I disappear into the night, when I am far away from it all, I tilt my head back and laugh. We actually escaped prison. Fuck. All right, after escaping, obviously our army was slaughtered and we managed to uh, get back to uh, Sardinia. Is the Pope calling us? We lost Crusader, what the fuck? The Pope abandoned us and we got kidnapped and apparently we're a coward. What the fuck? Well, many virtuous fighters still marching on Jerusalem, I have abandoned my armies for a safer haven. You mean a prison cell? While they wage relentless war against the vile humans, I besmirch my name and put in question my resolve to pursue the crusade. What the fuck? Our army got slaughtered because the Pope abandoned us. We get locked in prison. We managed to escape, and now we're a fucking coward, apparently. What the fuck, man? We literally have no soldiers left. That is absolutely insane. Bruh. Holy shit. I don't even know what to say to that. We don't have enough uh, people for chan uh, for uh, all of our positions either. Time to wage war on the papacy. Yeah, he's a rival now. Can we, uh, can we do that? Can we sent him an insulting... Yeah, 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 yeah! We're gonna send him the Pope! A poem about how incompetent he is. Yeah, humiliated over a poem. Yeah, bitch. Yeah, he's got 40 learning. Wow. We was really pissed off the Pope. We're rivals now. Actually, we really like the Pope, but that's not true. So, yeah, he absolutely hates us now. Because of that poem. Good. Good. Fuck him. 
try to say we were a coward when we died in the Holy Land or almost died. All our men died. Fucking popes, man, I swear. That's actually crazy. We literally get abandoned by the Pope. We get our army slaughtered. We get put in prison and we manage to escape, which is fucking brave. And we get called a coward, man. He's fuming right now. Judah Galu is just so, so angry. It has become a habit to walk service daily and I am not sure which was. Okay, cool. We're just walking our dogs. It's fine. Just think of the upside. What upside? I, there's no upside to this. We just got called a coward. As soon as we get some more men back, we're going back to the Holy Land. Actually, this is fine. We got a, we got a few soldiers. We're going straight back. We're going straight back. Absolutely crazy. You no longer have good troop quality. No, of course not. We only have archers, you know. Like, we've got, we've got the archers, the bowmen, and then we just got our levies. So, they're not good troops, but... I mean, we're impatient. And we're callous, so we're impatient. We just want to get back to the Holy Land as soon as possible to clear our name. So we're going to try and do that. Whew. Getting back to Sardinia, we did find out that we had an heir and a son, though, so we'll be we'll be very happy with that. We'll go ahead, go ahead and educate him, and we're going to give him a martial education. Given that we're in the Crusades right now, we have a, a very martial concept. Good, we got Crusader back. Wonderful. Let's go ahead and attach ourselves to the army of Rome again. We are a part of the great siege of Tiberius. I usually wait a few months to see how it is actually winnable law. That's fair. Unless I'm cynical, I don't do that. Oh my gosh. Our army was absolutely crushed by the heathens in Acre. And the war is over. The Broken Cross. The warriors of St. George found only death and humiliation at the gates of Jerusalem. The crusade so eagerly called and supported by Pope Innocentius ended in a disastrous defeat that could only hurt the cause of the faithful. This will surely embolden more blasphemers and infidels to further stray away from Catholicism. St. George has abandoned us. All for nothing. All for nothing. We're still in retreat, too. Our army's lost 4,000 men there. Damn. All right, we failed the crusade. God damn. Go ahead and hire a physician. We'll pet our dog too. We're still a little bit stressed. We did get Crusader though. I hire Philippa. Pretty ego reveler. She's not a renowned physician, but she'll do. Let's see how good she is actually. Or what the fuck just happened? We just got Holy Ward. Wali Zafir ibn Abdul Razak of Algiers has declared a Holy War for Lagodoro, for Sardinia. We have no men left either after that crusade. We lost all of our men in that battle. Only a few of them made it home. We have no men to defend Cesari with. We do have a daughter. So we're gonna we're gonna have to get an alliance. Or we will fall. So we can find something in Italy. Because we need an alliance. We cannot win this war without one. These are all German. I would really like to find an Italian one. French. Mm. 
Where's Tortona at? That's Italian. We can do that. We shall betroth our first daughter to the son of the Count of Tortona. And then we are going to go ahead and call him the war. She will accept. We'll gather the men and go hide in the mountains while we wait for uh, while we wait for our ally to come. The Algerians will probably be here before long, and we won't be able to hold the port, so we need to just hide in the mountains. Oh, they are coming straight for us, aren't they? All right, they're gonna come straight for us, even though we're in the mountains. We've we've tried to build up a base here, but we haven't had much time to to prepare. They are more than double our size. Here we go. Oh, come on, reinforcements! Oh, not in time. Not in time. We put up a good fight, but they were just too numerous. Our allies have arrived, though, so we may be all right here. Man, we can't fight them in the mountains. They'll have to come down at some point, though. There's nothing to siege out up there. On occasion, I like to take walks around my residence, but today I was feeling adventurous and decided to venture a little further than I normally do. With a few trusted guards, I made my way through the wilderness, about a couple hours' walk from my house, and spent time admiring the scenery. I even relaxed by a small stream and drank its fresh waters. All in all, the change in scenery had done me some good, for when I returned home later in the evening, I was in very pleasant mood. We're at war right now! What are we doing? We don't have time for this? Goddamn. Our wife is pregnant again, good. Yeah, true. He's, he, there's a full-on Muslim army in the mountains of his holdings and he's just taking walks outside of his house. Got some people. We got this. I'm impatient, we're going for it. They may have the mountain, but we have a much superior army. We're going to drive them out. Oh, Cerberus has walked by my side for many years. The passage of time does not spare dogs. As I kneel beside him, he starts wagging his tail slowly, but cannot raise his head. I sit with him long into the night, patting his white back until the tail steals. Oh, damn. Our dog died. Chase them all the way into Corsica. Here we go. Oh, our allies are really far behind. We'll wait for them. Nope. Not in time, son. We've met them at Bastia. Oh, our commander got injured in the battle. Brutally mauled. Oh, no. Good. They're gone. We need to take the fight to them now. Buy some ships. Not yet, mage. No, not 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 yet, thankfully. Two daughters. Oh, Laria, you have been so brave, so strong. Words can't describe my love for you. Now we have two perfect little girls. All right, we just had twins. Euphemia and Alaria. Nice. Uh, we'll get them. We'll get one educated with learning, and we'll get the other one educated in diplomacy. All right, we've landed in Algiers. We're gonna siege out their capital and hopefully end this war. Well, I've come to expect mischief from my son and heir, Castoro. His creativity keeps me on my toes. When it is not a prank, it's a brawl. A disgruntled tutor of grazing knees from an adventure gone wrong. Our son is very rowdy. Let's get a court tutor as well.
Here they come. If we finish the siege, it should be over. Where is he currently located? Do we know? No, he is currently sieging out our capital. But he's unable to do so. Our fort is too strong. Good. Took the fight to them, and we won! A good war. They thought they had us at our weak point, and they did. But with our new allies, we overcame it. The cost we did pay was our elder's daughter is going to have to marry that uh, Italian prince, but it could be much worse. So, I will take it. And on that note, we're going to build hill forts, given that we just got invaded and raided. So, we're going to want to build up some fortifications. We are not at war, so... Okay, we can go ahead and go back into regular clothing here. We can train a child. I forgot about that. We're gonna train our daughter. Actually, can we train our son yet? Mm, looks like not. It's time that my ward, Anbris, and I step into the courtyard and spar with sword, axe, and spear. Anbris looks apprehensive, but in time, surely he will understand amongst the greatest knights. It's a, it's a, it's a daughter. This event was coded for men only. <laughs> she has not learned anything. Oh, you know why? Our son is not our ward. Or is he? Oh, he is. He's just too young to learn uh, to fight with a sword, I guess. Yeah, well. Where do you want to hunt? The spear lies perfectly balanced in my hands as I judge the distance to the heart. My wife, Ilaria, is crouching next to me, hefting her own spear. We're going to do it ourselves. We're impatient and callous. We're an asshole, so we're going we're gonna to kill it. I'm not going to let her do it. Good hunt. My son does not have the best stats. We are giving him a martial education, so he will be a warrior. He will need to be strong in the coming crusades against the heathens. We don't have a marshal. Let's invite some knights. Yeah, we just don't have any. Jesus. Abed Al Raouf. He oh he was the guy who almost uh he almost won the the tournament against that woman. Nice. <laughs> Look at what stronger Cagliari is than us. He's still alive too. That Jedi is so impressive. Whole body aggressive attacker, fornicator, crusader, reveler, theologian, scholar, intellectual. We'll hire him and make him our marshal. Unless we get a better one. We st I think we still get two more. Ambrose was lucky enough to find a corn in the coin in the courtyard today. After a bit of polishing, it turns out to be gold. Since nobody knows where it came from, I allowed Ambrose to keep it and observe how she would spend it. A little later, I saw Ambrose brandishing the coin in front of some of the servants, proclaiming how she had found more money in the dirt than they ever found in a month. Oh, come on. So they were clearly unfavored by God. Fuck. She's callous just like we are. It's not a good thing, but all right. She takes after us a little too much. Bold villain. Yeah, it's about right. She's impatient and callous just like we are. Oh, fuck. Mamu, while you lack army, you don't, you hire some Swiss mercenaries. I read about them in this town. I was surprised how loyal they were to the guy who hired them and forth like a pack of lions. Yeah, if we save up the money, we absolutely can hire them. Uh, I think there's a Sardinian band. Nice. Um, 
Let's see if there's even Swiss mercenaries in this. I think we can actually only ita hire Italians. No? I don't see any from Switzerland, but yes, mercenaries would be how we win the war against Cagliari, so we'll need to save up money for it. But we're not rushing to that, to be honest. The Swabian band, they were famous. These guys were very famous. But yes, absolutely. Mercenaries are how we'll deal with them. Or alliances. Cagliari is very strong. We are not. We are currently the weakest on the island. Though we have some good alliances. So. We've been more of like a, a developing trading kind of family up until now. But our son is going to be a warrior. So perhaps he will take a different path. Irrigation. There are fair stretches of unsettled land in the Judicatu of uh, Logudoro, often blamed on unsuitable terrain. My steward, Abed al Rayouf has suggested that an irrigation project might make it arable and therefore valuable. An aqueduct. Absolutely. We can afford it. Tuscany just got out of the HRE. Matilda's daughter, our son. Damn. He is forgetful. Running over budget. My appointed assistant architect has come to me requesting that I spend even more on my aqueduct project in the Judicadu of Logadora. Surely, you yourself can see that any project, construction project would be expensive under these conditions, my lord. We'll keep going. It's very expensive, but that's fine. We need this money to hire some more knights so we can get a marshal, but... Ah, well. There are no competent architects in my realm. My new assistant architect overseeing the aqueduct construction I, uh, in Logodoro has been over budget. I am tired of nonsense excuses such as it cannot be done, my liege. Fuck. It's expensive, but we will get it completed. Do we not get a modifier for it? Hmm. Guess not. I hope they bring along the Mercenary Creation Band stuff from the CK2 Conclave DLC. Absolutely. Real flop. Absolutely. I rather enjoyed uh, creating a Tull Kingdom that uh, created the best mercenary companies for hire. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. The th what I'm really hoping that they add as their next big mechanic for CK3 is I want them to add basically like uh, like unlanded options. AKA you can play unlanded char like characters and you have options that aren't just ruling a kingdom. AKA like forming mercenary bands, becoming an adventurer, or even role playing out like the courtiers and some of the other kingdoms and stuff. I would love them to do a non-landed character DLC for flavor, wherein they incorporate the mercenary mechanic, the crusading orders, uh, just being advisors and stuff like that, adventurers, and like make make them all playable when you're unlanded. That would be so freaking cool, but I doubt they'll do it. So I fully agree with you, fully agree, man. I'm present to witness the last stones being placed in my new aqueduct in the Judicadu of Logodoro. My steward holds out a cup and catches the first few drops of flowing water before offering it to me. The ground is still hard and inhospitable, and much work remains, but the water is fresh and will in time bring new life to the soil. As the rivulets become a stream, I reflect on all that my work has taught me. Even decades from now, we will reap the reward for this. We got a 20-year aqueduct, which gives us a lot of development growth. Nice. We are almost out of avaricious. Then we'll go for architect, probably. We are still only 30, so we have a long ways to go. Unpredictable results. I mean, we only have one holding, though, but... Ah. We can train our daughter again in fighting. Let's see if she can pick something up here. She has improved! Good! Her prowess went up. Went up by three! Wow. Damn. Our son should be able to start learning to, to fight with a sword too soon as well. And our court physician just died. And our court tutor. God damn it. 
All right, we're gonna need we're gonna need some more money. The custom ruler win the vote in the end. Dinaric, the one who ended it in the end was Sardinia. Sardinia won it in the end. I was gonna play Cagliari, but I thought they were too strong and kind of boring, so I went with Lagodoro, who's much weaker. We're the weakest of the houses in Sardinia. We're the weakest of the Judex, the judges, the kings in Sardinia. So I want to do that slow build up, you know. But yeah, that's what won. That would be a lot of fun if they made it so you could lose your land and didn't game over. Exactly. Or just start as an unlanded character and build your way up from like just a courtier to like, you know, maybe a mercenary and then you join a holy order. And then like, you know, you, you maybe become a marshal and then get given land or something. It'd be so cool, you know, or just uh, generally playing out unlanded characters for roleplay reasons or just for fun is, I mean, so much you could do with it. Uh, your family keeps going and you basically adventure like you said gather people by your side basically one of the rebels that could show up in CK2 Exactly, you could play out like one of the uh, like the rebel bands or like the the adventurer bands or Or just build your way back up without violence, you know Like get a court position become really well liked by a ruler and get granted territory that kind of thing It'd be so cool man. Like I don't care about getting big titles. I just want an interesting gameplay, right? So if they did that I'd be so happy, but we'll see Thanks, good to know. Good luck on not dying. Thank you very much. I'm gonna need it. Good morning, Blackfire. How are you doing? Are you uh, are you Pacific, Blackfire? I assume you're Pacific if you're saying good morning, because it's three in the afternoon. We are now avaricious. Wonderful. We are well known for our love of gold. We've become a very very miserly Judek. Keep training our daughter. Our wife is pregnant again. Wonderful. She didn't learn. She'll learn in time. Noon here. I'm Pacific. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I'm okay. Just flew back from Texas, and yes, I am. Nice. Yeah. So you're back on that Pacific, uh, Pacific time. Hell yeah. Well, hope you're having a good. Uh, it is still morning for you. It's not noon. So, yeah. It's afternoon for me. I used to live Pacific time. I did really like living in California, but. So expensive. And uh, good morning to you too, Marquest, for six more minutes. It's technically morning. In this game, is it worth starting as a lowly lord, or is that not how the game is played? Yes, I find games to be the most interesting when you start at the bottom and don't rush your way up, but just kind of let like the game play out and slowly kind of move up or move down too. Some people just rush for big titles. I've never found that to be particularly interesting. I think this game is at its best when you start very low, but some people disagree with it. I will say I'm eagerly waiting for the Game of Thrones Warhammer mods to get going for CK3. I enjoyed the Geheimenschnacht and being a vampire. Dude, same. The, 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 the mods for CK3 I am looking forward to the most in order is obviously the Game of Thrones mod. So excited. The second will probably be the Elder Kings 2 mod because I loved Elder Kings 1. I played so much of it in CK2. And then I'm really looking forward to After the Fork as well, which is like a post-apocalyptic feudal America setting. It's really good. So yeah. The mods that are coming for CK3 are so fantastic, and given a couple more DLCs, it's really exciting. Is there a reason not to have a counselor? Yes, there is no one to fill the position. We're, we're, the, we're the poorest holding on an island that the whole world just kind of ignores. There's just no competent people in our court to fill the title. When I get out of debt and I save up the money, I'm going to hire one of these knights, and then I can make him my marshal. But until then, there's literally no one in our court right now. We're just really minor. The fork is coming from CK2. That will be exciting. Yeah, they're in they're in closed beta right now for it for CK3, I believe. I think I saw that on their on their Discord. So it, it's not too far away. We started in where we are right now. We started in Lagodoro, one of the Judex of Lod Lagodoro. We have not expanded at all. I am role playing out characters. If I don't get ambitious characters, or like you know arrogant characters, or aggressive characters, or diplomacy stuff happens, I don't expand. Like this is a role play sim like game and we're going all the way through Stellar, so I'm in no rush. But uh, yeah, we, we started where we are now. During a trip to the castle town, my daughter Andrus and her servant Antoninu vanished without a trace for several hours. Half the guards conducted an in-depth search and it was found Andrus and Antoninu had been accidentally locked in a storehouse. Nobody would confess to locking them in there, but she was found waiting calmly. Andrus explained they knew help would come eventually, so exerting themselves could do them n n no good. She's brave. Wonderful. All right, so our daughter is impatient, callous, and brave. Not bad. Not bad at all. How's her son doing? He's all right. Not, not the most competent. 
Another thing, do you see them going all the way into India and bringing China Mechanic into CK3? That will be high up on their list right now. I think they'll do it, but I think that'll be one of the later DLCs. I'd say at earliest, probably the 4th, 5th, or 6th DLC. Uh, I think they're going to do a couple Mechanic DLCs. They'll do a bunch of flavor packs for like Byzantium, probably England, uh, maybe like the HRE in France and stuff like that. And they'll add a couple more DLCs. They'll do it. It'll just be way down the line, I think, to be honest, in my opinion. India is in the game, but they are, they're lacking content. They're, they're really lacking in content. Muslims did try to invade the island, yes. The, uh, the Algiers, which is now called... Uh, oh, no, here they are. The Al Algiers did invade us. We, we had just fought the crusade. We, got, we had our army slaughtered in Jerusalem. We got taken prisoner. We managed to escape. We got home to Sardinia. We got called a coward by the Pope and sent him a poem, unironically, that called him a coward as well. And then the Pope hated us, and then we got invaded by Algiers, and we had no soldiers. So we had to marry off our daughter for an alliance so we could fight off the Muslims. So yes, we did just get invaded not too long ago. India is desolate. There are cultures with traits that don't work, yes. Like, there's a central Indian culture that gets bonuses and forces, but all they have is jungles. It's not well done. Our daughter did not improve again. Alright, I want to make sure that we actually can train our main son, so I'm going to... Get her to go be educated by her mother. She, where's our, where's our wife? Where's our wife at? Get our mother to train her. It's not a bad idea. Our wife's not really competent. We'll, we'll get her to be taught by our mother. There we go. So we can find a new court tutor as well. No courtiers meet this position. Okay. They have elephants. That is true, but. They don't really do much beyond look cool. Uh, that sound, the CK2 India DLC kind of sucked. It did. It had good music, though. What's that one? Uh, there's a really good Indian song in... Dude, yeah, song. There's a really good one. I'll play it. Here we go. This was the cool song from the DLC, though. I will say that. With the babe cradled in her arms, Judisa Laria looks up at me, head held high and eyes growing with pride. 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 My love, perhaps we could name her Petronella, after your charming acquaintance. I don't I don't remember this woman, but... Is this like a light jab suggesting that we're cheating, or... I, I don't understand, but sure. Sure. We have another daughter. We will give her a stewardship education. We're having a lot of kids, which is good, because again, we are at the end of our line. If we die and our heirs die, this game is over. So we thankfully had a lot of kids. My steward, Abed al Rayuf informs me that there is a desperate need for a new road to traverse the Judicadu of Logodoro. Many of the old roads are dilapidated and even dangerous. A commoner by the name of Orgador has been put forward as a natural leader in the construction effort. He seems alright. He's frail, though. Very well, get it done. Oh no, our daughter's sickly. Holy shit, 11.04, I've never made it that far. I did start in 1066, to be fair. That's hard getting so far due to lag and internet issues. I always build this big ass empire that it turns up to succession and I get pissed and quit. Yeah, I do the same. If I rush, I get bored and I leave. So I do very, very slow rises to power, uh, personally. I just find I enjoy it more and I don't get pissed off and I don't rage quit. So. Try playing tribes, it desensitizes you to title loss on successions, like the Mongols. That's true. It is not often a commoner addresses me directly, but Orogodor uh, reports at the construction efforts in Logodoro. The plan for the road was to pass through this field, my liegeness, but I know the kind of silver we're working with. Mayhaps my peasantess could request it. Uh, then we were rerouted through the nearby forest. There's road quality in progress. Whoa. That's cool. Sure. Just get it done. Just get that shit done. We are always in debt, aren't we? Wow. The Mongols are very fun to play. That's for sure. The road construction of Logodoro has met a delay. Or go to a reports that the workers have been corralled by a would-be innkeeper. To serve their souls and that of some travelers, they are building a roadside tavern. 
Uh, get back to work. We're impatient, so we're gonna tell him to fuck off. That would have been nice to have, but we're impatient, so. The road network near Logodoro is finally complete. This might very well be the best road in the entire realm, my liege. Or Godor announces with pride. Wonderful. We don't. We can actually really use him. So we're going to hire him. And we are going to make him our steward. Should know. First, let's move Abadel Hafseed over to Marshall. And then we are going to make him our steward. Wonderful. The guy building the road should get a raise for doing a great job. I agree, he did a fantastic job, which is why he's going to be our steward. Also, we just don't have any people to fill titles, so we finally actually have a full uh, council now. Is he Muslim? No, he's Catholic. He's just Andalusian. Hmm. Our steward is ambitious, stubborn, and shy. Any thoughts on about the upcoming DLC for EU4? Uh, Loki, from what I've seen, it doesn't seem like it adds a lot of mechanics. It's just basically the paradox's like chance to make Sweden into a really even more overpowered nation. It seems to me to be like a pet project of the Swedish paradox devs and nothing more, but I could be wrong. What about you? What do you think about it? CK3 missing the best DLC ever. Sunset Invasion, best meme content. There's already a mod out for it, actually. Um... When we convert from CK3 to EU4, we actually can turn on the Sunset Invasion with a converter if we want, just heads up, so. The, the, the one I really want to see them do, I, I want societies back. At the very least, I want them to bring back societies because they were the most interesting parts of CK2. It really made it interesting. Jihads are also now active, so we have to, we have to hope that they don't Jihad Sardinia. That would not end well at all. At all. In no way, shape or form, would that, would that go well for us? Our wife is pregnant again. Jesus Christ. He, he has been as fertile as we hoped. Goddamn. Why can I not trade my son in the Yard of Warfare? We're going to designate him. Is he not already our heir? Oh, he is our heir. Okay. Ah. We can't teach him sword play until he's eight. I see. Okay. We got another golden toothpick. That's the second one we've gotten. Who is who is manufacturing and selling golden toothpicks? I'd really I'd really like to know where those are coming from. Frankly, probably Venice or Genoa, but who knows? Societies are so interesting until those stupid ass religious ones would just pop up and convert ninety percent of your room. Yes, but but the fighting fight club was great. Uh, Demon Worship Magic Club was great. Um, what else was it? Herbalist Club was great, just becoming like, you know, a, a really like intelligent scholar who just like manufactures or tries to convert things to gold. That was fun. They were, there were a lot of fun ones, plus the religious ones I really did like, you know, like taking vows of chastity and stuff like that. They were so fun. And then mods made it obviously even way better. So I really hope that they add that at some point. But we'll see. I like how your guy is callous and trusting at the same time, right? Uh, and like, he, he knows he treats others like craps and does not care about them, but believes no one else would do it, such a naive fella. Yeah, he's really dumb. He's a really bad leader. Like, this guy is horrible. He's a great steward, but beyond that, he's a very ineffective person and leader. So, welcome back, Tall. As I engage in island chat with Judisa Ilaria today, she asked me, have you read about how the Catholic scriptures describe hell? Our wife is not a fan of small talk, Jesus Christ. Just walking in the gardens and she just starts talking about hell, why not? Some say that parts of hell are hot and fiery, while you're in great pain from the heat and constantly burning. Other parts, meanwhile, are freezing cold and your limbs grow numb with pain as you freeze to death again and again. I have to wonder whether a hot hell or a cold hell is preferable. Girl... Okay, alright, um... Let's focus on living virtuously so we can never see those places. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with that one. Let's not, uh, she's clear, she's clearly very unhappy in, 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 in her final stages of pregnancy. So let's, let's not make her feel worse. 
My guy must be into lizard women. Probably. Cold? Yeah. yeah. The new Hoi4 DLC and what seems to be a lackluster $20 DLC. Oh, it looks shit. I don't even plan on buying it, to be honest. For EU4 as well, really has to be worried for Victoria 3. If they pull another Imperator Rona and just abandon it, I uh, don't know what I'll do. Victoria 3 is an absolutely fantastic game from what I've seen. I'm not worried about Vicky 3 at all. I'm worried about the DLCs they make for it, sure, but Vicky 3 is going to be at launch an absolutely fantastic game, so I'm not worried about that. DLCs, I agree on them. I heard somewhere that due to Bible lore, heaven is hotter than hell. Really? Is that real? No king shaming? Hey, if you're landing lizard women, you know, live your best life. I will say, if you love lizard women, you're going to love elder kings too, because uh, Argonians, the lusty Argonian. That's a thing, right? My man is just waiting until uh, until it comes out. All right, we get to teach our son to fight with a sword. Let's do it. You better you better do us proud. We have another daughter, Constanza de Torres. God, we're just popping out daughters like Jesus. How many daughters do we have now? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. We have five daughters and one son. Fuck. Can you imagine? How fucking stressful that household would be if he actually talked to his children. See, given that this is 1105, the smart thing to do is just not talk to your kids at all and run your run your country. But you know, we'll see. All right, let's see. Let's see how our boy does. Let's see how he does. You little shit! He didn't learn anything. He wasn't trying hard enough. God damn it! I swear to God, some kids they just don't learn. We need that court tutor. I had a plan that made me hop on stream again. For CK3, we should play as courtiers, and when we switch to E4, we play as real advisors and stuff. I like the one German game. You mean you want to roleplay as courtiers? If you want to, go for it, Tal. I don't mind. Not sure many people would like to do that unless it's very dedicated role players. It's just not uh, much to do. I hear a lot of people really iffy or dislike the new military system on Vicky 3, but I think it'll be great. I'd rather not deal with military mechanics like Vicky 2 again. Oh, fully agreed, real flop. Um... I love it. From what I've seen of the new military system, I absolutely love it. I don't... I don't like microing, man. It's not why I play these games. I'm here for the politics and the economics and the story and the lore and all that kind of stuff. I don't give a shit about microing units. If I want to do that, I'd play a Total War game. If I want to micro divisions, I'd go play Medieval Total War or like, you know, Warhammer Total War or something like that. Like, if I want a strategy game, a grand strategy game, I want to be able to focus on the economy, the politics and all that kind of stuff. So, I love it personally. It's great. None of the Hoi comp players are going to go over to Vicky 3, which I'm excited about. It'll really keep out a lot of the toxicity, because the comp and the micro players are so fucking toxic, man. So if they if they stay away from Vicky 3, it could be really it could be a really good thing, you know? So I agree. I'm fully for it. You go to micro divisions, you love Hoi 3. Yeah, exactly. The Vicky 3 rebels are brutal. That That's for sure. If you try and, like, ban slavery, you get a massive revolt, which is realistic, but still. There are a lot of rebels, I will say that. Unless you just don't reform at all, which I guess is warranted. All right, let's train our child again. We need we need to get this boy trained up. We need to get him trained. Aha! He has improved. Oh, <gasps> he got diligent. Oh shit! Oh man, we were we were training our son to fight with swords, and uh, he got prowess and he got diligent. Holy crap! That is lucky. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. He's a good lad. He's doing well. He's a good lad. He's a good lad. Fuck yeah. Let's see if we can, uh... No, we'll trade him some. If there's an uprising, uh, there might not be. Hmm. Yeah, that is true. Uprising, there are civil wars. Nice. I've been keeping up with the development of a game called uh, Espiocracy. It sounds interesting and I enjoy espionage. I, I actually think I've been following that on Steam as well. That's the espionage politics game, right? I've been following that as well. It's really feeling the pressure of being the only son. Yeah, there's no one else. Either Castoro does really well or that's it. I mean, he has no brothers to take his place. He has to be competent. This is a bit of a case I think of like pressure makes diamonds. So it appears Castoro may be up to it. Nice. Our wife's helping us out too. 
Just hope this lot isn't on level two stress by the time you play a sim. Oh, you know he will be, but you know, good, good leaders should be stressed. If you're a leader or a king or in any position of authority and you're not stressed, you're doing your job wrong. The game is going to be a grand strategy and you lead the intelligence agency. Yes, I saw that. It looks really cool, man. I'm excited for that one. I've only had uh, CK3 for a few months and I'm ready to try out multiplayer. I have all the DLCs, but the new one. Can I join games with the same DLC? MarQuest, Paradox Games, if you are joining a multiplayer game, only the host has to have the DLC. So as long as you're in a game where the host has all the DLCs, you don't have to have them all. And you get access to the DLC content as long as you're in an MP game hosted by them. So yeah, you don't need all the DLCs. So yeah. If you like roleplay, we do host roleplay CK3 games in the in the Discord server, if you're interested. But if you like casual and stuff, there's plenty of places out there. It's like playing as a Hoi 4 intelligence agency fighting other agencies. Yeah, I've been watching their dev diaries. It looks really good. I'm proud to see my daughter no longer as a child, but as an adult. With sufficient tutelage, even a child that has displayed little natural inclination towards diplomatic influence such as Andrus, oof, uh, can come to truly understand it. With an excellent grasp of all manners and etiquette, and an understanding of all kinds of entertainment, and the eloquence to go along with it, she will have little trouble navigating a life at court. Alright, so she got Charismatic Negotiator. Her, uh, she, can she marry? Not yet. Almost. They're almost of age. Ah, oh, there we go. She's going to be heading to Northern Italy. All right, see how our boy does. Come on, lad, you got this. Ah, he didn't improve. Hell yeah. I've been meaning to pick up Songs of Six as well. Looks like a fun empire and city builder. I haven't seen that one. So I want to review a guy got up to a 10,000 army, a strong army, and you can get 20 people as a village. I've never heard of that game, real. I've never heard of that one. Kenshi Mary, classic ancient and medieval fatherhood. Yes. I love my daughter, and she will make an absolutely wonderful uh, wife or whoever. Oh, what the hell? What did I just get linked to? Anyway, um, what can Mexico be? While out on a leisurely stroll, the cry of a particular merchant stands out from the regular hustle and bustle of the street. Greetings, my lord. I am an exquisite assortment of wares. If my lord has any coin, we have a few, not many. The merchant's stall is positively brimming with baubles and haberdasheries. As a skilled purveyor of fine goods, a couple of trinkets catch my eye in the overflowing of knickknacks. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna go with lucky hey, 100 stewardship nice and we got a pot shirt which is an ancient pot shirt reportedly it originates from the holy site of canterbury nice we have a little rock that we carry around like like an otter we're not actually a kid we're not actually a jedi of sardinia we're actually just an otter who appears as a human because we have a collection of rocks it's like dwarf fortress and rim world that sounds really good but this time you can spiral your city into the thousands. I'll have to check that out, man. That actually sounds really interesting. I love watching Man City fans arguing they have real fans. Man City does have real fans. It's called the Saudi Royal Family. Woman being handed out like gift baskets makes sense. That's true. I love my daughter and she'll make a wonderful alliance bargaining ship. Exactly. It's, that's, that's the height of fatherhood in medieval Europe, man. One of your kings needs to try and live forever, going crazy into the process. They haven't added immortality events yet, which is a shame. My favorite CK2 event chains were the immortality ones. Not because you get immortality, like it's nice, I guess. But I love the writing that they did with those events. Like the the like the the visit from death, the chess match with death. Such well written events. Like those were my absolute favorites. While I was in the castle town of Castoro, his attention was caught by a criminal chain in the pillory. Castor lifted his head and made a show of ignoring the criminals begging for water. We're going to make him callous. Just like us. He is now diligent and callous. When we get back, we're going to do some more sword fighting and see if we can train him. Let's also get our daughter trained by our chancellor. And our mother. Let's see how he does. Come on! Ah, he didn't learn anything. Damn it. 
Elder Things 2 does not currently have a release release date, Condor. They're pretty far along with it, but they, it's probably a waste. It's probably a waste. Not soon. Immortality plus max stress plus lunatic sounds like fun. Yeah, that's just like a broken elder god, basically. I love the one in CK2 where a portal to hell opened and you had to close it. Yeah, that was a good one, too. What mods do you use? It's a very long list. I've written down that I need to... I'm going to make a mod list that you guys can see. Um, but I'm not going to make it right now because it'll take a while. It's, uh, it's very long. I've got like 50 mods on right now. Just heads up. There's a, there's a lot of mods on right now. Yeah, it was basically Monty Python. True. That was one of the options you could do was throw the livestock in. Or just like, you know, get the get the peasants to fill it up. Immortality would definitely lead to lunacy. Absolutely. There's no way that you could be immortal for more than a couple thousand years and not go absolutely batshit insane. There's no way. Immortality is one of the worst curses you could give a human being if it actually existed. Just saying. I'd love to live to see the future of humanity, but you would go crazy doing it. Just saying. Hamu, when we, do, when we get to Stellaris, I suggest we play with Giga structures. Yeah, Scoby, when we go to Stellaris, I will be able to do a full mod list for it, because Stellaris, obviously, there's no converter needed, so I can choose any mods I want for Stellaris when we get to that, which will be really nice. And yeah, probably Giga structures will be added. Relatively newish game, already using 50 mods. Yes, absolutely. You're goddamn right, Commodore. But if you're truly immortal, you wouldn't be able to commit suicide. You know? Jesus Christ, it's already three. I've been streaming for three and a half hours. God damn. I'm gonna keep trading our son. Come on, lad. Oh, God damn it. Castoro. You need it, you need it, you need to try harder. You're not doing a good enough job. All right, we'll send, let's send, see if we can send him to an actually like good, good fighter. We don't really have any. Should we can uh, we can hundred thirty? Damn it! We can't afford him. Ah, oh, damn! He'd be perfect as a marshal. Who is our marshal? We'll keep trading him ourselves. I'll be right back. Two billion years late, no one left, and you're all alone for eons. Now the sun becomes a red giant, and the earth is destroyed. You are cursed to freeze and choke in the void forever. Yep. Immortality is a fucking curse, man. So you're one and only son after five daughters. Surely you want to spend all that time raising him personally. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. All, of, all the premier teams have uh, black profile picks except for Liverpool. Hmm. Where's the dude who always talks about DC Comics? Dude, I haven't, I haven't seen him in months. He, he dipped a long time ago. What's up, Yarl? I think the next MD game I want to RP is Ukraine. Yeah, go for it, man. Be fun. Ah, oh, 
Our daughter is no longer sickly. Fuck yeah. Let's keep training our son. Come on, lad. You can do better than that. It's the fourth time he's learned nothing. Ah, come on. Come on, child. You can do better than that. What's up, Grico? How are you doing? How about Superman 1 million Superman after meditating in the sun for 15,000 years? Wow, I bet he was ridiculously strong. I really enjoy playing Miners over Majors in MD. Yeah, I, I enjoy Miners over Majors in pretty much everything, to be honest. Holy Order. I was about to say, where the hell did the Count of Galura get 3,000 men from? He has a Holy Order. Checks out. He's currently fighting... Ah! Tunis just Holy Ward, uh, Galura. The, the Arabs really want to take Sardinia, it seems. Thankfully, we've got the Knight's Hospital Art to, to help us. I think what the play is a proud Ukraine to focus on his people and tries to rebuild their nation. Nice. He's nigh omnipotent. He failed again! What is wrong with our child? I, I, I had so many expectations for him after he became diligent, but... Damn. Embarrassing. Polish scholars have long devoted themselves to the study of medicine. Now the polymeth and I can't even begin to pronounce that. Oh my god! I've learned much, he says, from the works of Al Zarawi and Ibn Sina. Yet I have improved upon their techniques. I can remove contract ca cataracts and boils and treat diseases which previously thought untreatable. Some courtiers urge me not to associate with this heathen. We're not zealous. He is Muslim, but... We, we need a physician. Your son is garbage. Let's take a picture of the book of the French on him. Insightful thinker, renowned physician, incestuous and quick. Let's see if we can get, make him convert. No, he won't do it. We can send him a poem. He won't like that. It'll stress him out. Um, I will send, uh, I'll send him a gift. We'll sway him. And then we're going to get our son educated by him. Our son, because he doesn't have a tutor. Clearly... Whatever we're doing isn't working. The little shit isn't learning, so. We will we will get him trained by our new physician. I'm waiting for uh, him to register at my work. What do you mean I'm? You're waiting for I'm? The Napoleon RP win. Not, not remotely planned. What's up, Commander, uh, Commander Dante? Uh, please stop banging your sister. You mean having a massive petroleum fund? Yeah, he is, he is incestuous. That's gross. But he's very competent, and we need a new physician. So, there we go. I'm going to make him the court tutor as well. My suffragan bishop, Neven, requested I silence a group of clerics who flaunt the lusty lifestyle of vagrants and offer satirical criticisms of society and the church. These goliards tend to be younger sons, sent to be educated in monasteries or universities, who feel no true calling to the religious life and who have not uh, secured church offices. These shameful clerks drive around in shabby carriages and carts, fumes and even. They rouse the laughter of their fellows and bystanders in infamous performances with indecent gestures. Sitting atop a tavern bench in the alley between a smithy and a well, a goliard is entertaining the crowd with two acolytes, encouraging listeners to donate food or coin. You may know of St. Mark, but listen well, good gents, to the new gospel of the Silver Mark. When the Son of Man comes to the seat of our majesty, first say, Friend, why have you come? But if he continues knocking without giving you anything, throw him out into the outer darkness. And it came to pass that a certain poor cleric came to the curia of the Lord Pope, and cried out, saying, Do you have mercy on me? The doorkeeper said the Pope, for the hand of poverty has touched me. What is this? Oh, they're being this monologue, I guess. Ah, oh, you're watching from your work. Hell yeah, Ash. Hope work's going all right for you. I was also thinking of playing Ireland and going full pro-Irish unification. Nice. Going good, Greco. Going good. This is the beginning of the grand campaign. Single-player grand campaign. So, it's been pretty wild so far. 
Superman 1 million can create life and planets. Resurrect the dead. Revive Lois Slain. Jesus. So basically just a, a god. Like a really powerful god. You ever get a song stuck in your mind and you don't know how to who, know who sings it? Or the lyrics or the music? Absolutely. Way too often. He's operating heavy machinery. One of my servants recently just experienced a personal tragedy as their beloved child died from illness. Their servant is, of course, now in mourning. A look of uttermost grief on their often tear-stained face. All the other servants and even a few members of my court are doing their best to comfort the servant of mine, so perhaps I should offer at least a few kind words. Or callous. And impatient. He would say it, wouldn't he? Why don't you say anything? Peasants die all the time. Or an asshole, so we'll say that. We are a bit of a con, aren't we? Damn. I would really like to recruit this guy, but we don't have the money. save up and recruit him. Our, our son comes of age so soon, though. Well, going on their patrols at night, many of my guards use torches to light the way, though some keep some lanterns, lanterns with them as well. One night, as I am going to and from part of my residence to another, I pay close attention to the lantern that the goddess guarding me was holding. Do you like it, my lord? My guard asks as we continue walking. I have a spare in one of my barracks. You can keep this one if you like, if you feel your current candles or lanterns are not to your liking. Seems the guard mistook me for having an acute interest in the lantern. To be fair, though, it wouldn't hurt to have another one around. Sure. Adding this clutter artifact to your inventory reduces the chances you encounter other clutter artifacts. Sure, we'll take it, though. We wouldn't say no to that. It's a lantern. Nice. Hostile scheme resistance chance. That's good. I guess we can see around at night easier. Good thing. People are trying to murder you. I'm not bummed about the queen passing. Uh, it's weird because I hate the monarchy, but as a person, she was kind of a sweet old lady. I love watching her interact with servants. Kind of wish it was Poon or Zijin Ming. That I can agree with. I definitely wish it was them, not her. You should play as a good and just ruler. Griego, I always roleplay the traits, so if we're not a good guy, I'm not going to roleplay a good guy. I do enjoy playing good characters better, but I'm not going to force it. Taking bets on if Cagliari will curb stomp Hamu. Tall, you want to make a poll for it? No, 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 no. Tall, start a start a prediction for it. Start a prediction for it. I saw there between the market skulls of Sasari, a heavy pouch tugging at my belt. How do I make this coin work for me? So I admire the wares of a local stonemason, perfect geometry, a sound investment. Count Aldo Brandino, a Tortona, suddenly appears at my side. A word of advice, my lord. Have a look at the sculptor's stall over there. Their ways might be simple, but their potential is great. He's a very good steward. Damn. We'll invest in a way Mason's workshop. We're going to do a lot of building, so that works. What's a master? How are you doing? Been a while, dude. Hope you're doing well. I tried to join someone CK3 game and it said the game was out of sync. Anyone know what that is? That happens a lot in CK3 multiplayer. They needed to re-host. I assume that game was probably already going when you tried to join, because it happens a lot with CK3 multiplayer. I think the king would be better for Greece than the shit the politicians we have. Yeah, sometimes. Monarchy is a double-edged sword. If you get a good leader, they'll do a great job. If you get a bad leader, they're gonna destroy your country even worse than incompetent bureaucratic dem like democracies. Is your goal to unify Italy? No, I don't have pre-described goals, Greco. It's a grand campaign, so I, I like to just let things go where they go and let the ambitions of the characters define the story and where we go with our own ambitions, generally speaking. Our politicians and shit, if you lived in Greece, you would agree with me. The Americans are spoiled. Greco, I finally get to tell you that story, by the way, because I'm not busy role-playing. I think most people have heard this before, but I'm going to tell it to you because you're Greek and you'll get a kick out of this. I told you that I had visited Greece and I went to the island of Eos, you know, the party island, right? When I was there one night, uh, we, I, I was really drunk and we'd been like me. I was there with my buddy. Uh, I was traveling with a friend and we made some friends on the island. We'd been partying with, drinking with, that kind of thing, right? 
And this one night, we were in one of the clubs in Eos, and it was really late. It was after midnight. We were we were dancing and stuff like that. And we were dancing with these these Greek girls. They were really nice, and we were having fun and stuff like that. And uh, we ended up leaving the club and going outside and stuff. Uh, and, and we were like, we were on like one of the the balconies, like uh, on the island, and we were we were talking. And uh, like the group I was with was all talking with other girls. I was talking with this one. I forget her name. She was really fucking cute and really nice. And uh, we were having a talk about Greek politics, and she expressed uh, the, the same thing that you said, that the politicians in Greek, uh, Greece were horrible, that the country would never be able to recover. This was like five or six years ago, uh, when the economy was still pretty bad. And just like, you know, there was no hope for Greece politically. And that uh, she, she told me that she like wanted to like, she had wanted to study politics when she was younger and she, she stopped. And I was really drunk. I don't remember what I said, but basically I gave her like a, a five minute monologue speech about how you know, it's important that you fight for political change. It's important that, you know, that you be the change you want to see. All that kind of stuff. I was very political back then. I, I was, I'd run a campaign before I went on that trip, actually. And uh, anyway, she's absolutely shit-faced. I was shit-faced. And she just starts crying in the middle of the speech. And I remember her friends. Oh, man, they were so mad at me. I think they thought, like, I murdered, like, you know, tried to like, do something bad or something like that. And I got yelled at. And then, anyway, the, the Greek girl ended up just going, like, oh, no, no, no. He didn't, he didn't do anything. Uh, she was just like so she thought the speech was I guess so good when she was all drunk and shit that uh that uh it made her it made her cry so uh and anyway after that we went back in the club and danced and had a very good night but you you I thought you might get a kick out of that story so anyway one of, one of the things that happened when I was on ES alrighty my spy master has come to me with grave news well we uh do not know who uh someone is planning to kill her our mother Jesus I don't know who they're dealing with, my lord. They think that they can kill me. I will show them. Oh, yes, I will. She is a renowned spy master, so I don't doubt that. Easy money. That's a lot of points being bet right now. God damn. You know, Modi's office tweeted about the queen. Half the replies were rip and the other half were, can we get uh, our diamond back now? <laughs> they didn't take a massive diamond from you guys. That shit's fucked up. They need to give it back. I mean, they, they, they took... They took a generation of, like, your capacity to industrialize. The least they could do is give you that diamond back. That's pretty funny. So you did not do the dirty with uh, the Slatina. I, uh, I, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Your shave points. There. I still have her on Snapchat. That was six years ago. I actually still have her on Snapchat, I think. I never use Snapchat anymore, though. Alrighty. They took around 45 trillions worth of stuff from us. Yep. Yep, they abused the fuck out of you. Has Bird ever apologized to India for that, by the way? He is still alive. He's 79. Wow. I'm sitting at the local tavern enjoying a good drink when a woman comes up to me. It seems she does not recognize me, but given I find her oddly enthusiastic demeanor amusing, I don't reveal myself for now. Can I help you with something? I ask her. Yes, I'd like to talk about God, she says. I want to gesture for her to continue, she says. God speaks to us all, but we never listen. Go to the local church, read the scriptures, and praise God. We're, we're callous, so we're going to tell her to fuck off. I never cared for the queen, but with a monarch as amazing and nice as that uh, dies, I can't help but feel bad for him. Yeah, I guess. I have pretty strong views on monarchy, and it's a time of mourning, so I'm not going to talk about them. I think I just uh, need the coup of the Greek government and install myself as king. That'll go great, Greco. That'll go great. You definitely won't get put in prison or up against the firing squad wall, you know. What do you expect? It's Britain. The only reason they had an empire was to take stuff from others so that they would have something to eat that's edible. That is true. I'm hosting a prominent local scholar. Contrary to my expectations of him being an awkward, doddering old man, he is a tall, handsome, and charismatic young man. I see my maids and some of the noble women gazing upon him with an amusing hunger in their eyes as he recounts his many adventures with his soothing, deep voice. And one of his anecdotes, he recalls a time he came across a large lake in my realm. He, he once visited it, but almost drowned when he tried taking a swim. When he came to, he found himself in one of the lake's islands he had never seen before, and he describes its geography. I do not recall the existence of such a lake on an island either. The scholar circled the shore of the island and came across an old temple built by the ancients, yet still in good condition despite being abandoned. 
There he quickly prayed to God. Afterwards, to his surprise, he found a small boat near the temple, which he used to leave the island. Every time he returned to the lake, he could never find the island again. No one has heard of an island on that lake with its characteristics and geography, and it isn't mentioned in local legends. And his fellow scholars have not found a trace of its historical records. However, we're all sure he isn't lying, as he, res he is a respected scholar after all. We are trusting, so we would believe him. Curious. Verdineary story. I'm gonna go with that one. Oh man, I just missed a lot. Um, we co-op the U.S. Yeah, maybe. Rico for king. Yeah, it's just uh, rally the Greek nationalists and the patriots. Yeah, you, you could do that. Ancient alien CK3 edition. Or it was God. It could also be God. Or, or it's the, uh, what are they called? Anunnaki? We are doing Monarch here anytime soon. We don't want to boost the caste system after 75 years. Yeah, no kidding. That's not a good idea for India. My God. Not, not a good idea at all. I'm going to play the CK2 soundtrack. Plenty of those after the Golden Dawn. They got pretty popular. They got very popular, actually. Let's play that good music. Install a semi-socialist government like Sweden and Norway. That's the meta if you want quality of life. What is the next Toy 4 MP game or CK3 one? Canadian, I will be hosting an Old World Blues game a week from Saturday at 2 p.m. Uh, the next CK3 game is going to be starting uh, a week from Saturday. It's the Nile campaign. If you want to sign up for it, you can do it in the Discord. We're also going to be starting an England game a week from next Tuesday as well. So we got a couple CK3 games coming up. If they release Toy 5, what era would it be? Probably the exact same. They won't change it much. Red Dead 2 is a fantastic game, yes. Today my personal cook prepared yet another meal by boiling the ingredients, remembering the derisive Roman maxim. The lazy cook prepares everything by boiling. Let me turn that down. <laughs> the beat dropped in the fucking CK2 music, goddamn. Anyway, ah, uh, trying to look intimidating as possible, I approach the cook and tell him, Don't be lazy! If you work hard, everyone will appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, do a better job. I'll pay you for this shit. Hoi 5, hopefully Cold War. I hope they make a modern day game. I really hope they do that. Like, I hope they actually come back to East versus West sometime and actually make it. That'd be really cool. I don't expect that to ever happen, but it would be really nice. Yeah, Hoi, Hoi 5 is a long ways away. My my guess is next we're going to get is probably going to be... Uh, I I think EU 5 will probably be next. I might be wrong, but if I had to warn a guess, I'd, said, uh, I'd say EU 5 is probably next. Which is cool. I mean, I love the EU 4, so I'm all for it. Thirty-seven. We're still not that old. Our son has been doing really well under the tutelage of that guy. He is an evil lackey. He's bisexual. Good, good for you, kid. He's generous, callous, and diligent. That's a really weird combo, and not a, not a very good one, to be honest. That's a, that's gonna be kind of weird to roleplay. All right. East versus West Poon edition. Civ 7, nah. Civ 6 was a train wreck, man. It's gonna be a while before we get them. My spymaster has come up with grave news. It is Captain Pedro of the Aster Leonis Band of Leon that is plotting against my mother. Bro, I don't even know who you are. What the hell? I'm gonna send them a shit-talking poem. He tried to murder our mother, so we're gonna write him a poem about his own incompetence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's basically like doing it like a like writing a like a shit talking you know rap, like rap song back in the day. So we uh we told him what's up. Yeah. You've been kind so looking to take over. To be honest, the new announced DLC looks great. You mentioned that, Chris, and I didn't actually look it up. It does look interesting. I mean, humankind. I never played it. I never bought it. It was too expensive. But I I still do need to check it out. I think I'm in the clear. I don't think the Greek intelligence agency is watching me anymore. No, just the FBI, man. You're fine. 
I wouldn't mind Hoi Fi, Fi being something like World War 1 plus World War 2 plus the Cold War. That would be really cool, but it's too ambitious. Paradox doesn't do things like that. That's way too ambitious for Paradox, unfortunately. Possible, but unlikely. Aha! <gasps> Whoa! Cagliari to split in half! Tortoli just split off from Cagliari. They lost their other holding. They're both siblings. Oh, man. Old man uh, Constantino died. So Cagliari got split in half. Wow. New feature, inter-empire form, congress of humankind, new currency leverage, new quarter embassy. Well, that does sound really cool. Wow. Cagliari just split in half. They're a lot weaker now. Jedek Mariano is very strong. I will give him that. Hold on, a Muslim? A Muslim? <gasps> Tunis took it? Oh, we can't have that. We cannot have a Muslim in Sardinia. <laughs> Permanent scowl, nice. Oh man, he's allied with the Amorvids. We would need a very strong ally here. Oh boy, that doesn't look good. That doesn't look good at all. Uh-oh. Is he actually allied with him? Or is it just because I was trying to do a holy war? Where do you see their what do you see their alliances? There used to be a screen for it. Um That's because like his wife is Ah, well, we need a really strong ally. Otherwise, we're going to be screwed here. That's not good. That's not good at all. What we're going to do is basically just... Uh, we need to try and find some allies so we can push out the Muslims in Tunis. We could hire a Holy Order, I think. They're already hired. When the Holy Order is not hired, let's start a war. And let's see if we can push them back. Because we need to... We're not, we're not a warlike person. But we would not want to have Muslims on our border. I'm visiting some of the peasants nearby to better gauge how things are going in my realm. Or at least to pretend I care. I ask one of them how they expect the next harvest to go. There's a nip in the air, the farmer says in his rustic dialect. Coal won't be good for my crops. Pray to God. Good luck. Holy moly, I look away for a few hours and you create this woman. Five kilometers if... Ism. The fighting was reported in Lehman. This would imply the entire Kharkiv Islam defense line has collapsed. Didn't it collapse last night, though? Kharkiv is like... Man, the Russians are just unable to hold anything right now. Winter is coming. We need to find him a warrior. I'm gonna recruit him, and then I'm gonna make him educate my son. All right, we found another witch again. There's no evidence of it. We wouldn't hire her, but we would give it circumstantial evidence and ignore it. And she disappeared. All right. The only time Russia lost in the winter was when the snow started speaking French. Sure. Russian sodom is greater than degenerate bullshits. 
If Russia actually mobilized their whole army in Air Force, they would have happened a long time ago. They, were, they don't want to mobilize because Russia is still pretending it's not a war. They're still saying it's a special military operation, which is a joke, but apparently people actually believe them, so. So at this point, he'd be he'd be pretty worried right now. He'd be pretty fucking worried. Given that oh we're overwhelmed by stress. And our dog's dead, so we can't pet it. Damn. Uh that the that the Muslims are on Sardinia. We'd probably be looking to make an alliance with some of the other leaders of Sardinia to push them out. We I think have the piety to hire the holy order. Oh my god, they lost all their soldiers in war. That's not good. The Knights Templar just lost all their soldiers. Oh. Life has never been easy. It feels like the loss of my daughter and Briss has pushed me over the edge. Oh, she died? What? She was murdered. Oh, man. Damn. I still remember her as a baby. So tiny and fragile. Despite that she survived growing up, growing older, until now. But she suddenly stopped. I had so many hopes for her future. So many things I wish to see, which now can never come to pass. We're gonna become, oh man, confider maybe. Yeah, we'll become a confider. That sucks, Jesus. Daughter died. Americans called it a war. The one thing I don't understand is why the West sanctions Russia when they invade Ukraine, but didn't sanction America in 2003 when they sanctioned Iraq without justification. Uh, because Russia is just invading Ukraine to take territory unilaterally, and Iraq was supposedly for nuclear weapons, and we didn't take land. I'm not saying Iraq was justified, it wasn't, but we did manage to convince the world it was for a good reason. Russia's region is something something Nazis. There's no evidence to back up what they're doing at all. Alright, we have a confider. It's probably our wife. We're probably just confiding everything in our wife. Did we end up seducing her? We did. Let's romance her as well. The time has come to let my feelings towards Ilaria be known. I want to, re to remember this ray for the rest of her life. We're gonna sing a love ballad. We're a, we're a poet. Yeah, she liked it. Cool. All right, let's go. Let's go talk to the confidant. Oh, it pisses off all of our courtiers. That's not good. Do that in a minute. You believe American propaganda and lies? I'm not saying I do. I'm just saying that we actually did convince a lot of people that what we were doing was right. Russia never did. We all know what Russia is just trying to annex part of Ukraine. They want the oil and gold reserves. Correct. Uh, India hasn't picked sides in the whole Ukraine thing because it didn't help us in 1971. Now, you guys are way too close with Russia, and you're getting a really cheap deal on oil from Russia right now. So you're, you're playing the Russian side. Competition for my wife. What the fuck do you mean competition for my wife? As of late, all my visits to Alari has been ruined by my knight, Dunloop. He follows her everywhere like a lost puppy. His attempt to charm the lady are laughable, yet I fear his persistence might be rewarded. What's his prowess? Oh, we're not gonna win that. <laughs> I'm gonna pay you to fuck off. We're gonna pay him to leave. Good. Good. Ah, you're talking about another person. When do you forget Western documentaries about the far right in Ukraine? At least the Russians have better justifications than the Argentinians. A foreign minister did give a savage reply to the Europeans when the whole oil thing was brought up. I get that, uh, but let's be honest. That, that is why Modi is siding with the Russians. I mean, he's being very real political about things. Modi is a very good statesman. I mean... He's not bad, but... His, his, his reasoning is very simple. Take this. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, y'all. Yeah. Alright, how are we looking on the Holy Order? We really need to try and push out these heathens. This is becoming an issue. Already hired. Oh, I swear to God.
We can't do anything about them. We're just sitting in Sasari with our tiny little army quivering in our boots because, man, we can do nothing to push out the Muslims. At all. Well, the Holy Order, we'd have a chance, but... I secured an invitation to a feast in Sasari, a seat close to Ilaria. We've secured a seat next to our wife. How impressive. Despite my determined attempts, I am failing to strike up a conversation. She's probably rendered speechless by the intensity of my infections. Suddenly, the loudest fart I have ever heard erupts from our table. A few of the guests are looking at Laria. I must save her. I'm not going to say anything. We're callous. We're an asshole. <laughs> We're not going to say anything. The U.S. could be okay with India buying Russian oil as we need to curry India. We do. In India and the U.S. should work together. I don't understand why the U.S. doesn't, like, work harder to make a good alliance with India. U.S. optimally should be building a future with, like, India. They're the world's biggest democracy. They have a lot of corruption problems like we do, but they're a developing country similar to us, next British colony. India and America are naturally very close allies. I don't know why America doesn't pursue it as one of their major foreign policy goals. It's crazy. Which is my opinion at the moment. Ukraine never comes to Israel. It's uh, been under attack, so I don't want people to die. I really could care less about the outcome as long as the war ends. They need India as a regional power. Europe is buying uh, Russian oil from China. Nobody seems to care. Europeans don't uh, have the right to whine about that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's all just, uh, I'll just pretend. The Bangladeshi War of Liberation, as shall know as Indo-Pakistani War, 1971. Pakistan has supported the UK and the US. We were literally done. Russia did help us with a UN veto and literally fighting in the war. Oh, Modi is an asshole, but he is a very competent leader. I'll give him that. Have you seen the thing about Celtic getting fined because their fans all had Palestinian flags? No, I don't follow Scottish football, my man. The US would need India to combat China. Yeah, I guess, but I'm thinking purely from an economic perspective. Like, India has a lot to gain from non-predatory investment from the US, and the US has a lot to gain in a strong economic power that we could be closely allied with in Asia in the future. I don't know. It wasn't a football thing. No, I didn't see it. Modi is a smart asshole. That's exactly how I would describe him. He's very intelligent, very competent, but he's a dick. A band of several hundred pale-skinned Sakaliba, enslaved men and women from the eastern reaches of Europe, have escaped the realm of my acquaintance, High Chieftain Milad Tal Talk. Is he? Is he instituting fucking slavery on our island? Bro, what the fuck? He's here for like two years, and he's already got a bunch of Eastern European slaves. Talk as he may about how treasured they were in his armies in his harem. They have braved many dangers to seek freedom in my land. We all have scars, their leader, Paris Lazava, tells me. Um, on our bodies, or deep inside, but we are strong and determined. We long for some land of our own, where we can speak our ancestral tongue. If it you let us settle in the Curadoria of Porta Torres, we could work hard to make it prosper. Sure. Why not? You are gonna have to convert though. So yeah, you're gonna you're gonna have to do that. Aha! She has converted to Catholicism. Wonderful! Good, good. She can, she can speak her own language, but she is gonna be Catholic. Yeah. Get the cannons, exactly. Slave actually comes from Slav. Is that true? Crusade to free the island of Muslim heathen slavery. Well, Modi is the only one we currently have, because the Congress literally has the biggest idiot on the planet. Even Congress supporters know he's an idiot, so Modi will probably even win the 2024 elections. He's very popular last time I checked still. I mean, the BJP is pretty much undisputed in, 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 in India right now. We will... We will make our daughter our own ward. She expects a council position. That's fine. We're going to make him our spy master, and we're going to make her our chancellor. He really fucking hates us, doesn't he? No chance of that. Oh, man. Castoro comes of age! Oh! Oh! That's really good and really bad. 
I'm proud to see my son no longer as a child, but as an adult. For the longest time, I was hoping that good tutelage would be enough to teach Castor the intricacies of warfare. I was naive. He had shown little understanding of the subject, but at least he knows which way to hold a sword and might even be able to tell a footman from a knight. All right. He is a misguided warder. Bad. He is intelligent, though. Again, I'm using a mod where you actually don't know what, like, congenial traits your kids get until they come of age. So... We didn't actually know that he was intelligent. I mean, we probably guessed at it, but we didn't get it confirmed until he's 16. So that's cool. But uh, he is really incompetent. So unfortunate. We're going to get him to study as a physician, I guess. We'll get, send him off to do that. Oh, we don't have the money for it. Never mind. It's one of the football thing that you asked, uh, you would order to find. War is only a matter of technical expertise. U.S. debt and instability is just as much a Chinese weapon. Also, China is making inroads into the USA land buys the company buys. True. We need to kick out Chinese uh, investments in the U.S. Both the USA and China can collapse each other's economy, but it's mutual self-destruction. Most American bonds are owned by China and most Chinese bonds by the USA. Absolutely. We're, we're so intertwined with them. Which we shouldn't, because, man, CCP is evil. Both can destruct each other's economy at the cost of this. Uh, Israel and India already working together. We sell them weapons. China has bought a shit ton of farmland and shit inside the U.S. Yes, they have. A lot of businesses, too. China's economy is about to collapse like a ton of bricks. Yes, the housing crisis is currently blowing up in China, finally. So, that's going to cause a lot of global uh, economic issues. The problem is, in the South, is completely divided. Both Congress and the BJP don't win most seats in the South. The South is more developed. That's why uh, both parties have a hard time getting a spearhead. The problem is, most people live in the North, and the North has the most seats regarding... Regardless, the BJP wins if they control the North. Yeah, it's much more poverty-ridden, but, you know. Eh. The U.S. has long left the manufacturing economy. Oh, a long time ago. So all those jobs left in, like, the 70s through the 90s. They have a poor young population, easy to export. We need to bozo the Chinese economy so that they can learn their lesson. Yeah, but if we do, the whole world economy collapses, too. They're too big of an exporter. If we hurt China, we hurt everyone on the planet, really. All of us. We'll all feel it. I mean, we're already starting to feel it. Our son may be a misguided warder, but he is callous and diligent, so he's going to be aggressive. We may actually do some expansion with him. 41. We're still kind of young. We got time. Why would you want a factory full of Chinese in their 50s when you could have a 10-year-old Bengalis? I read a little bit more. Uh, it is more the USA doesn't want China to India to overtake Pakistan completely. India was winning anyway, right? Well, I don't get why the US is not like trying to cooperate with India. They're not. We shouldn't view them as a rival. We should view them as like a, you know, someone we can build with. It's so silly. He's trying to seduce our wife again. We're gonna pay him to fuck off a second time. There we go. And we need to find a wife for our son. Let's find someone of good standing. Good noble woman. She's lovely, but she's way too old. Um, also too old. Beautiful, though. Hmm... Not really any good traits. Yeah, right. They're all really old. Wheezing. Ugh. All right, big alliance then. The loose. That'd be a very powerful ally to have. I think this chat needs to stage a coup. It would be a great government. Oh, oh, oh. Don't bring me, don't make me bring out the NKVD. Pakistan is currently so fucked, who thought supporting Taliban could come back to bite their ass? I don't think Pakistan has ever won a war against us. No, they have not. They've won, like, battles, but they've never won a war against you, Master. You guys always beat them. Did you get the audio from Inbo? I did, I just haven't set it up yet. 
I think it's going to be a revolution in China in the next couple of years. I don't think so. The, the CCP is too good at what they do. Could be wrong, though. Hmm. Glowing. Ah, she's all right. She is the daughter of the Count of Chartreuse. And she is glowing. Whatever that means. Margaret has naturally clear skin. She's chaste, though. We'd see that as a good thing, to be fair, so... I mean, meta-wise, it's a bad thing, but in terms of, like, our values as a Catholic, it's a good thing, so... We'll marry her to our son. Arrogant bastard! Me? Wait, what? Are you calling me arrogant, or my character arrogant? Can't, I can't decide if I'm supposed to be insulted right now or not. Hamu, are you gonna do Mega Campaign? That's what we're doing right now! This, this is the mega campaign. You're watching it. It's in, it's in the beginning. Yeah, no, there, there will be a revolution in China. I don't think. Oh, I am. I, I'm an arrogant bastard. Okay. That's good to know. It's nice, because, like, you know, it, I guess I know one of my traits now in real life, you know. So I guess I've got arrogant, I've got impatient. So I know I knew two of my character traits now. I'm only missing the third, which is good, so... Appreciate that. It's good. It's good. It is good to learn these things about yourself, you know. National Los China would be so based. What it? Is, is, is that something the world really needs? I don't think so. Could be wrong. The last terrorist attack in India was in 2018. Was that? I assume it was probably uh, in Kashmir, Master. Would it be in Kashmir? I'm guessing. Modi really cracked down like in uh, 2019, wasn't it? Did it? When did Modi take away the autonomy of Kashmir? It wasn't too long ago. Was it before or after that terrorist attack? Every time I close my eyes, I see Judessa Ilaria's face. Sleep will not come. I cannot wait another moment. Cloaking in shadows, I make my way to the garden outside her living quarters. The sight of Ilaria's chamber window makes my heart stutter. So close and yet so far. This is our wife we're talking about. But wait, who is that? Climbing up the tower, the shady figure stops by Lara's window and unlatches the shutters. Alright, we're gonna go fight him. The sound from the struggle above is the greater motivator I have ever known. Without care for life or limb, I hoist myself through Judessa Laria's window. I feel as if I have plunged into a frozen lake. Laria is on the floor, the intruder pushing her down, a gleaming blade between them. Someone's trying to murder our wife. But Aurora, I grab the villain by the collar and throw him into the wall. The rest is a blur. When the danger is over, I turn towards her. Alaria, are you all right? I ask cautiously, as if my words were a spell. She finally unfreezes and throws herself into my arms. Thank God you are here, Galu. Wow. Okay. She's our soulmate now. Cool. Well, someone just tried to murder our wife. That's not good. This guy's wife is a dude mad dick. Yeah, she... She does tend to. 2019. Okay, so he did it right after. The, he used the terrorism to justify taking away Kashmir's uh, uh, independence, then I assume. Right, Master? Is that how you reply to an opinion instead of asking how to use your admin features? That's a sign of weakness. You're right. I'm a very weak person. With his engagement to Margaret, Castor has asked if I would host his wedding at my court. A wedding would doubt be a cheery affair, but there is always the cost, and perhaps there are more important matters to attend to. Sure. We can afford to do a pretty good wedding for our son, so we'll do it. We'll, we'll do the wedding. I've read through this already, so I'm not going to read through it all again. Y'all will remember what it was. We can all tell Castor had too much to drink, even though he insisted on showing us how sober he was. Bro, come on. Come on. Take their helmet off. You're at a party. Simply rising from his seat proved too much of him, and now I'm covered in vomit. How did he vomit at me? He's got a helmet. He would have vomited on himself. My immersion is fucking ruined. We're going to talk shit on our kid. Worst sound. I haven't added it yet, Jakey. The sad part is that the people of Kashmir for many countries are pretty chill and very welcoming. Yeah, I heard Kashmir is full of really nice people. I've always wanted to go there. I was supposed to. I went on a trip to India and Nepal. I went through, like, central Nepal. I went to, like, you know, Agra. I went out to Rajasthan. I went to uh, Varanasi. And then I went to Nepal for a month to go trek. And I was going to go back to Kashmir, but then I had to go home to help my sister out. It really sucked, man. I still really want to go to Kashmir. What's the name of the Star Wars remix album you played a couple days ago? I got you. Let me go find it. 
There's two I played. I'll send you the first one. If this isn't the one you want, I'll, I'll send you the other one. Thank you for your hospitality. You're such a welcoming person. You are very welcome. Uh, Mark, Mark, Mark Hulk. Mark Hulk. Uh, say your name. If that's not the one, I'll send you the other one. Ah, uh, absolutely. My immersion is fucking ruined. What kind of meat is this? So much in flavor. What are these vegetables? Almost sweet. Oh, and this wonderful dessert. This wedding has some of the best food I've ever tasted. Let's patting ourselves on the back. Nice. Life reaffirmed. The food was so good, we want to live longer. It's when you know it's good food, man. What? <laughs> she died from stress. Jesus. Aw, she just became our soulmate, man. My dear Ilaria, I may not have loved you. Were we literally soulmates? Yet I feel you're passing more acutely than I ever thought possible. You were always there, my constant companion. Did I take you for granted? There are so many things I left unsaid. She died from stress? Wow. She bore us six children, man. God damn. That's fucking, that's fucking sad, man. Damn. We're impatient, so we're gonna immediately find another wife. He'll be sad, but like, as an impatient man, he'd immediately want to get married again, because he'd be expected to do so. Died from stress because you paid off her lover. Probably, yeah. You put stress on, on her when you made her have six kids. She is doing her duty as a good Christian woman. Jarl, how dare you? How dare you? How come, Greco? Wait, what? What are you thanking me for? Yeah, that is fucking sad, though. All right, we need another wife. Get a good noble woman. Maybe not a jester. That's a bad idea. Uh, we need a good alliance. Uh, too young. We want a prestigious wife. It's our second marriage. Kashmir would never have happened if the British lawyer that uh, drew the border drew it fucking properly. Yeah, but that's like asking a British person to draw a good line is impossible. It just doesn't happen. If you catch your wife uh, cheating, you fuck the guy to a certain dominance and go on your way. That is true. That's, that's a good way to do it. Good way to do it. Just as, as a show of dominance, you know. Balanced humors. Is she actually from Barcelona? No, oh, she's from our Barcelona family. Sure. Ooh, we get a lot of prestige for marrying her. And she has good humors, whatever the fuck that means. So, there we go. All right, we've got a wedding to plan. You don't consider yourself British. Scots tend not to, to be fair. All right, we're gonna make, we're gonna, we're gonna really pay a lot for it. We're gonna do a really big wedding. That we can't afford, it's fine. We feasted and danced late into the night, but at last it is time to head back home. I cannot help but notice that Castor and Margot seem to hit things off immediately, cracking jokes and laughing the night away. No one marries for love, but perhaps they will live as good friends. Departing the hall, we leave the newly leds and the, their new life together. So that is our son and his wife, Margot, who is chaste. Not the best. They became friends! Well, I mean, that's, that's kind of how marriages worked, I guess. That's the best you could expect back in the day. Scots should be allowed to leave the UK. Yes, they should. They've, there's been a couple referendums. My father-in-law, Ramon Berengoyer, Berengoyer, approached me bearing a worn chest. Smiling sadly, he says, This wedding robe has been passed down through my family for generations. I wore it myself when I was wed to my own wife, Cecilia. He pauses for a moment. We'd be idle and lost in memory. It would be a great happiness if you could wear it yourself on your own wedding day, he says, as he takes from the chest a carefully folded garment, and it's, it's good. All right, yeah. We'll wear that. Nice. 
Is that Ramon? Ramon? He's still alive. Oh my gosh. That's the that's Ramon from Barcelona who starts on there. He's actually still alive. Wow. Texas should be allowed to leave the US, no questions asked. <laughs> you know what happens to traders down south, right? There's a song about that. I always thought the English were good of Asia and Africa, but apparently they didn't uh, even leave the Scots and the Irish. The Brits just fuck up everything they touch, to be fair. By St. Joseph, what a hassle this is. The servants come one after the other and the questions never end. My head is swimming. Red flowers or blue flowers? Fresh quill or fine cheeses? It's enough to drive a man mad. Uh, seeing my consternation, Abd al Rauf approaches me. Perhaps we could use some help with this, my lord. Now we'll do it ourselves. Alrighty. We're gonna do a really high quality, very expensive wedding. Our to be wife really likes it. We did pay a lot of money for it, so. Cool. Wonderful. We are married. Have we watched a crusade against the Muslims already? How? Do I look like the Pope? We can all tell Castora had too much to drink. Bro, you you need... We need a stage of intervention for our son. Hot oh, damn, dude. What's up, Tajit? How's it going? Queen Victoria be like, if you're under nine, you shall work in the mine. Sounds about right. I well, stumble outside to relieve myself by your shutting around the corner. As I turn it, I see my queen's timbor sneering as she sinks her blade into the face of the cow cowering Simone. Whatever sound I must have made had been enough, for Timber turns to me, surprised on her face. Well, we're gonna tell everyone about that. And we... can we imprison her? We can't, that's weird. She must have ran. No, she's in our city, why can't we imprison her? Hmm. Weird. It's not a face, Dad! The helmet is who I am! I don't know, he won't take it off. He just will not take it off. We can, we can, we can force him to take it off. We're having an intervention, son. It's been two years. You need to take off your helmet. All right. All right. It's better this way. Take off your fucking armor too. Jesus, dude. There we go. All right. We staged an intervention and we talked to our son about his drinking problem and about how he hasn't taken off his helmet in two years. Um. And it was successful. He, he has taken off the helmet. Uh, and uh, he's still drinking, though, which is unfortunate. Nice. We got Eager Reveler. That's good. We walked to our bedchambers without speaking so much as a word. All night, I had been searching for something, some spark of attraction, a common ground between myself and Mahalta. But there was nothing. Uh, now, finally secluded our bedchamber, she turns to look me in the eye. I do not love you! Oh, man, this is just what our first wife said, too. Deja vu. I do not love you, nor do I know you well. But as your wife, I promise to treat you with respect and honor. All I ask is that you provide me with the same. Can I count on you? And, and, yeah, that'll work. All right. We'll send her a love poem. She hated it. We'll pay for the wedding ourselves. Lizzie is probably the only good royal in the British monarchy. Why is everyone in chat against nationalism? We're a little bit stressed, so we'll go talk with a confidant. Oh, our bishop. Sure. We're friends of our bishop now. Nice. We've been telling him uh, everything that we've been doing. He's Isn't he the one that, like, literally, like, told everyone about, like, a hundred different sex positions? Wasn't it that guy? Hmm. Elizabeth's dad was cool. He seemed solid from what I, what I heard of him. What I read of him. What I saw of him. Etc.
An initial payment in a recent trade, I find myself in possession of a large herd of cattle. I've been assured that the animals are the highest quality, but the question of what should be done with them remains. We're going to attempt a breeding project. Aha! We succeeded! Good. We get... Large cattle herd. Development growth 20%. We have unused farmland. We have uh, the Sakalipa settlers that came from, like, the former slaves. We have upset peasants. We have an excellent road network and a new aqueduct. A lot of up, a lot of upgrades to our holding. Following the destinies of a lowly thief, I asked my daughter Constanza what she thought. She expressed doubts about whether any gold could want the realm to be ruled by such a harsh law. Cynical. We're not cynical, so we wouldn't do that. We'll try and make her just. It's raining cats and dogs here. South India is currently on an orange alert. Damn. Like flooding, flooding chance then? Yeah, that was the bishop. I thought so. Try and make the Russian people your heirs. Russian Italy. Athens is full of hoes. There. All right. We are almost at architect. We've done a lot of buildings and a lot of upgrades, so it makes sense. When we can, I'm going to upgrade the hill farms. That's the next thing we're going to do. Like I said, we're not going to expand until our son comes of age. He is intelligent. Oh, good. He actually got his chaste wife pregnant. Wonderful. Good job, son. We are the head of our dynasty. We're the head of our culture, too. We're working on divine right, which uh, we don't. We need battlements, so we're gonna work on battlements. We have no learning, though, sadly. Breeding. Uh, all they want is money from the fleeting population and tourists. Athens needs to be fucking cleansed and be drenched in holy water. It's not that bad, Greco. I've been to Athens a few times. I mean, I wasn't there for long, but it seemed very solid, man. I don't know about rural areas, but Mumbai is prone to floods every single year. It's literally an island city. The water has nowhere to go but up. Has there been any talks about, like, building, like, a seawall or something? To, like, protect against that? Or is it just not logistically possible? I'm sure it'd be pretty expensive, so... Oh, man. All right. We had another daughter. She is potentially intelligent. Ugu. We can do a better name than that. All right. Who has a good, who has a good Sardinian name for our daughter? I am not willing to name my daughter Ugu. That's that's not going to happen. So we need a good good woman's woman's name. Does anyone have a good name? First, first name that's not a meme gets it. Hoes are everywhere. That is true. Mumbai has oil deposits, so probably not. I want you to guess the second and fourth most beautiful cities in the world by Emirates. According to the Emirates, or like by them? Sabrina? That'll work. Good enough. It's a medieval basic white girl name. So, there we go. Svoboda. Svoboda. You can ask for gold. We'll do that. Wonderful. We can demand money from our son. He doesn't have enough money. We're going to demand it anyway. Our daughter came of age. Ilaria. And Ephemia. Right, they were twins, weren't they? Let's find them some husbands. As you do. The heir to the throne of Kuyavia. It's a lot of men. So we're going to go and marry her off. And then for our other daughter... Oh, we can uh, we can marry the heir of Cagliari, so we can secure an alliance with our fellow Sardinians. We'll go ahead and do that. Good. And then let's betroth our youngest daughter as well. Eh, no one else is really good. We'll, we'll wait. Oh, she's of age too. Um.
the city of Ancona. Hmm. City of Trent. County of Shalon. too old. We'll wait. We'll find her someone later. What's up, Paulus? Going pretty good. How about yourself? Been AFK for a while. Nice that Galu has more children now. He has a lot more, yeah. Mumbai has oil. The oil has been sucked up since like the 1980s, but it's the US that they would invade my frying pan if they could. That is that is very true. According to the Emirates, I have no idea, Jakey. Not a clue. I assume probably Arabian cities because they're very subjective. Gonna upgrade those hill farms. We've been called to war against Pomerania and Prussia. Well, it's sad, but we can't really just go send our troops across all of Europe to help him. Then again, we're gonna expect him to do the same thing in the future if we fight the Tunisians, so. Alright, this is a chance for our son to get some experience. You can put your helmet back on now, kid. We're going to send our son to go help out in that war. According to the Emirates, Glasgow is fourth, Edinburgh is second. Really? That's surprising. I mean, they're incredible cities. Well, Edinburgh is. I don't like Glasgow much. The one good thing the government has done since 2019 was no tax on electric vehicles. That's good. Also, Elon is pissed that after a 200% tax on completely built cars entering the country ever since Modi's making it, make it an idiot project. It's smart, though. You guys gotta develop your own industries. I'm traveling and the sun is beating down on us heavily. However, it is too late to turn back home. I'm getting closer to my destination. The mention of a local noble I have to meet. Yet I and the rest of my entourage are clearly getting more and more tired as the sun rises even higher in the city. We are impatient, so we're going to keep going. Glasgow's more of a party city? I guess. I just don't find it, like, aesthetically pleasing. The idea of countries making their own shit is so based that we should definitely reduce uh, dependence on China. Absolutely. I know, man. I, I've been in some... The best parties I've been to in Scotland were in Edinburgh, not, not Glasgow. But to be fair, I didn't know anyone in Glasgow, so... Take a look around Europe. We haven't really looked around for a while. There's a gout-ridden one-legged king of a uh, drunk of France. Wow. Probably why his country's completely split up. The HRE has incorporated province in Savoy. Poland's gotten very strong. Byzantium is holding out right now. Uh, they're, they're very strong, too. They've got a very good emperor. Seljuks, as always, very, very powerful. Leon has kind of won from the Christian king, so Navarre has gotten very strong, too. Anso the fifth, so he's Anso's son. Garcia's son is in power, and he's not doing too well. Oh man, lovers pox, wheezing and frail, and a drunkard. That's not good. Zarkost has gotten very powerful. The Muslims are more or less winning in Iberia right now. Yeah, hostility. England is ruled now by William the second who is the grandson of William the Conqueror, so. Pretty interesting. Robert the Fox did finally die, it seems. Listen, Ham, next time uh, the, the open is in the Carnoustie, I will tell you all the best spots when you go. Oh, for parties? Yeah. It'll be a while before I go back to Scotland, though. If Elon needs to get a Tesla here, he will have to partner with a local company to build a Giga factory here because it's only 15% if you assemble the cars here and not import it directly and build shit. Makes sense. He can afford it. And yes, it is an independent Tuscany. It's the it's the son of Matilda who's in charge, Duke Dito. He is forgetful, he's a journaler, he's flagellant, he's a reaver. He's a theologian, he's diligent, temperate, and patient. Very good leader, honestly. Would not mind him being in charge. Oh, yes, where are our armies right now? I sent I sent my lad up to the north. Where's he at? 
the fuck is my army? Oh, there they are. Oh, no. Oh, fuck. No, 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 no. We landed on top of an enemy army. And we need a retreat. And we need a retreat now. Fuck, 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 fuck. Ah. Did our son survive? He did. Okay, good. Five men got away from the slaughter at Natangia. To be fair, he has no martial skills, so that checks out. He was one of five men to escape. We love our son dearly. He's not a competent military man, is he? Misguided warrior. Fuck. All my personal vehicles are biodiesel, and I just use uh, grease from all the fries and stuff from my local restaurants. Nice. Is that a new screen? I don't remember that. Uh, new screen where, Syncl uh, Syncline? How do you mean? While attending the chamber business, I sat on the chamber paw for far too long and my legs got too numb. I'm afraid if I stand up, I might slip. Well, yeah, well, we'll get it figured out. Ah, we're fine. Oh, the battle results. I am using, a, like, a bunch of mods. One of them probably changed it. We have another son. Benito de Torres. We are going to make him a learned man. Ever since Delhi changed all the tuk tucks from petrol to electric, the emissions in the city went down by 7%. That's it? Hmm. I mean, there are so many of those things. That's smart. Yeah, a lot of mods. I've got like 50 mods on for this. Or something like that. It was a lot. Also, why did we just go bald? We appear to have gone bald from stress like our father. Apparently it's hereditary. Checks out. Hopefully the sons learn not to run in from battle. Hopefully. Hopefully, Burn. We'll see. And we are finally going to be an architect. There we go. We are now both avaricious and an architect. Very good stewardship. I wonder if you'll be able to run mods at MP. You can if it's like one or two and they're stable, but they do cause a lot higher chance of desyncing, so it's not advised. Your profile says you should be playing Northumbria. What? Oh, yeah, House Taurus of Logodora. What do you mean, Martino? A profile. The game so far is really good, Imbo. We've we've done no expansion at all, but I'm having a great time. Like the, I've had, I added so many event mods and stuff like that, so there's been a lot to do and stuff. And again, I'm not trying to rush to titles. When our son takes over, Castoro, he's misguided, but he is going to try and conquer parts of Sidonia. So we will get some expansion here. Right? Oh, I haven't updated my schedule, have I? I haven't updated that in like a month or two. Holy shit! Hold on, let me go fix that. I have not updated that in a very long time. If you look at the dates on that, I haven't updated it in two months. Fuck. All right, let me let me add my new schedule. I always forget to update that thing. There we go. It should update now if you refresh your screen, and it shouldn't just be really inaccurate. So, there we go. Our youngest son died. He was sickly. That's a shame. You can name a child! If we get another one, we'll see. We are getting pretty old. We're 45 now. He just has such a strong ally. He's getting old, though. As soon as he dies, we invade Tunis. We'll invade this holding as soon as he dies. As soon as he gets rid of his, uh, his alliance. Unless we can hire a Holy Order. We can? Oh, we don't have the piety for it. If we go on a pilgrimage, we should be able to. But we're at war. 
Right, when the war is done, if we go on pilgrimage, when we come back from that, we'll be able to uh, hire the Knights Hospitaller. So we could actually start a war of Tunis a little bit early. It'd be risky, but we are impatient, to be fair. Then you try and travel between cities on those things, and it takes forever. You mean Tuk Tuk's? Old Delhi was such a well-planned city for its time, now it's the world's most traffic uh, city. I've been to Delhi. Delhi was absolutely wild, and not in a good way. So, so smoggy. So crowded. Oh, man. I did not like Delhi. I, I imagine not a lot of people do, to be fair. The smog was just so bad. I really did love India, though, Master. I want to go back so badly. I really did like it. The history there is so cool. There's so much of it. People are really nice. Well, they're not trying to scam you. You know, but that's anywhere. You're going with this uh, play for another two months since you say 9-11-2022? Did I fuck it up again? I'll go check that after. Um... I mean, the grand campaign, this one will probably go on for months. It'll be a while. It'll take us a long time to get to Stellaris, so. There's a running gag in the country that people in Delhi are the angriest in the country because they hate their life. Fuck. I could imagine that. Man, living in Delhi would be pretty shitty. I mean, you make the best out of anywhere you are, but it kind of reminds me of, like, I guess, Indian LA, and I hate LA, so. Constanza was lucky enough to find a coin in the courtyard today. After a bit of polishing, it turned out to be gold. Alright, this is the event we've seen this before. She's gonna see what she does with it. Um, what can I make her callous? Like, like father, like daughter. Wish we had more soldiers. Oh, man, he's losing this war pretty badly, too. I would help, but all my soldiers got slaughtered. Is it the 9th of November, uh, November or the 11th of September? 11th of September, Martino. I fucked it up. It's had Midwestern USA noises. If you get a sub, name him Amadora. I assure you, it will be a good heir. Benito Bueno. He will bring glory to the dynasty. All right, we'll do, Imbo. Oh, shit. Punchback Deuce of Bar Barcelona. Man. Our ally is really struggling in this war. It was 5 p.m.? Oh shit, I actually don't have much longer. I got something to go tonight. I want to try and fight a war before we end today's session, though. We'll fight this war of Tunis, and I think we'll probably end today's stream. Continue it next Friday. I did want to fight a war, though, because this is a this is a paradox game. Hunchback of Notre Dame, but in Barcelona, nice. Yeah, pretty much. Duke Pierre Ramon II. Not bad stats for a six-year-old, but he's hunchbacked. So... Who's his heir? Uh, well, uh, Thank you to resub, Moose. Well, How's it going, well, man? Well, Campaign is going really good. We haven't expanded at well, all. We've just upgraded our holdings so. and uh, and lived our life so far. Um, but we are preparing for a war with Tunis. Tunis took part of Sardinia, and we need to push him out. So we're about to do that. But it's been pretty good so far. A beloved priest who is known for their boundless generosity and kindness and living in a nearby town recently died. Such a beloved figure will be remembered by the community in a great celebration. I've been invited to the funeral and perhaps it would be due to pay my respects. We're not going to do that. We are uh, impatient and callous, so we wouldn't do that. Modi is an asshole, but he did so much shit. The country has uh, never grown as fast as it is growing today. Yeah, he's very competent. I wouldn't call him a good man, but he is a competent one. Our wife is pregnant yet again. Petronella comes of age. We are going to marry her off to the heir of Cagliari. We have we are gonna officially marry into the Cagliari royal household. 
Uh, they are related, but not really closely, so it's fine. There's like a couple degrees of separation. Competent leader, best leader. To a degree. To a degree. Let's save up all this money for mercenaries, too. Alright, what did you want him named again, Imbo? Uh, Amadora. Amadora. We do need to find a husband for our daughter. County of Torta. Sure. He is young. He's a count. And we get an alliance. It's a win-win-win. Our development is going up pretty slow. That's a shame. Hmm. Hopefully this war ends soon. Another son? Why is Modi an asshole? Because he's really... Oh, a couple things. Uh, he, he doesn't really... He, he cares more for development. He's really in bed with the industrialists and the corporations, and he focuses on economic growth, which is beneficial, but he doesn't prioritize, like, the needs of the common people. He, he prioritizes economic expansion, which I suppose in the long run is a good thing, but it does hurt the quality of life of people in the short term. Uh, he's also been very aggressive with centralizing control of the federal government. For example, in Kashmir, he basically broke treaties there to put Kashmir directly under the control of the central Indian government. So he's a very much a centralizer, strongman sort of fella. Uh, he's also very religious. He's very Hindu. India obviously is primarily a Hindu country, but there's a lot of minor religions. And uh, he, he definitely panders more to the Hindu base that makes the PGP party popular. So... Centralization is, it is a good thing uh, when you don't just destroy people's, you know, traditions and things like that. There was a pretty well-respected treaty with Kashmir that, again, he completely broke. So, it's a shame. Did he die? <gasps> he died! Oh, wonderful. All right, we can go to war. It's time. We've waited. Amir Malad Ibn Muris is dead. And as he is dead, so are we in the power here. We are going to push the Muslims out of Sardinia. We shall take Galura, and we would expand our own holdings. The first war we have fought in two generations. We shall call Cagliari. We shall call our allies in Cayuvadia. We will call our allies in Torda. And we will also... Fuck, someone hired the Holy Order. God damn it. <laughs> Thought we had a Holy Order. We will make our son lead our, our troops. He needs to get some experience in combat. Good, Cagliari is joining the combat. We're gonna siege out their holding in Galora, and then we're gonna take the fight to Tunis, across the sea. While out on a stroll, the cry of a particular merchant stands out from the regular hustle and bustle. We've gotten this event before. We're going to go for the high-risk one. We lost money. Oh, well. Oh! We got a cool artifact. Ancient Scare Brooch. It gives a fertility bonus and a health bonus. Nice. That's really cool. Why didn't you look at Norway, uh, Finland, and uh, Denmark? Their prison quality is, uh, in life is better than the free mans in the USA. Yeah, it's way higher quality because they work on rehabilitation, not punishment. Kashmir Atomi issue was actually never a problem. Literally, both the BJP and the Congress agreed on that, which was never happened in the history of the country. People were dying every day before the uh, Kashmir Atomi was taken back. Yes, but you did take away the, the, the autonomy and the rights of the local people who kind of, you know, had been guaranteed that given the circumstances between India and Pakistan. I don't honestly disagree with you, but I understand why people would not like that at all, especially if you were a Kashmiri or Pakistani or Chinese. I do get it. Greek can be a little monarchy, but the rest semi-socialist. Here we go, the siege is almost done. 
Galura is about to fall, then we'll have to cross the ocean. Or the sea. He asked for a white piece. The fool. Not a chance. You wish to surrender? I'm happy to give you terms. If not, we will siege at your African citadel and force this peace upon you. Oh. Hold on. Let's deal with our army first. All right. Our son is going to lead a major battle. Cagliari is being sieged out. We have an army behind us. Let's do this. A great victory. Good, 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 good. We've given him some experience. Let's chase down their army and destroy it. And then if necessary, we will go siege out their holdings. They're trying to run. They're going into Corsica. We'll follow. We're going to make it. Good. They tried to escape back into the ocean, but we caught them. Another good victory. We're going to go take our prisoners and deposit them back in the Citadel. I'm using a mod that prisoners don't get transferred to your prison. They are attached to an army, and you have to go back to your own territory if you want to drop off your prisoners in your dungeon. So we're going to go uh, put our prisoners in Sasari. And then we're going to go try and deal with this army once and for all. Oh, what are they doing? <laughs> Come on! Come here! Not right now. This looks interesting, but not right now. Let's wait for our allies to catch up. Ah, oh, he got flexible leader. Good. Aha! We've taken him prisoner! The Emir has been taken prisoner on the battlefield, and we will force his surrender. And with that... House Torres takes its first conquest and its first victory. We have expanded through all of the northern region of Sardinia and now look ready to dominate it into the near future, allied with our only rival in Sardinia. Wonderful. A fantastic position to build off of. A great place to also end today's stream. Let's go raid someone. Save me if you find a CK3 streamer. I do have someone going tonight, and I real had not realized that I had streamed this long, so I do have to go. But I did want to fight one war. So we will continue this next Friday, and we'll keep the grand campaign going. And we will probably end up conquering all of Sardinia next session. So we shall see. Damn, there's a lot of people uh, streaming CK3. Shinrir is streaming CK3. We'll go raid him. He's really good. Shinrir is really entertaining. I like him. Uh, we'll go raid him. I read them once before, but it was it was literally you know one of those streams where like they're just playing back an old stream. I did that, so All right. we'll go read him. Um, I am streaming tomorrow. We have uh, the one of the last sessions of the tiered MD game tomorrow. Uh, I also may be playing on the casual EU4 in another server. I was asked to do that. I may do that. Sunday, I am not streaming. So we got a lot of upcoming games, but not this weekend. And then next week, Tuesday, CK2 Iberia. Uh, d d on Wednesday, and then I'll do some more Millennium Dawn 2. If you want to continue with this and keep watching the Grand Campaign, it'll be on Fridays, 12.15 Eastern, uh, pretty much every week. So, hope you all enjoyed watching. Hope you had a good time. I know I am. I'm really liking this so far. So, we're going to get ready to Have a good night, guys.